Hello you podcast people and welcome to the computer game show. My name's David Turner. I'm here with Matt Murray. Hello. James Farley. Hello. No Sean Bell this week. We did have a guest plan, but they had to pull out last minute. So we are doing a three person show for a long t- for the first time in a long time, aren't we? Dave, can I just ask a question? That yes. That intro, it's like you started with a voice, like with a doing an accent, and then it's like you abandoned it halfway through. What was that? About? No, no, that was fully fully planned. Um also, I don't want to be criticized with how I run the podcast by you. Why? We'd like to thank our Patreon producers this month. They are Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chap, Simon Nelson, Tom S, Jack Oven, Moomin Biscuit, Dave Ernsberger, Colin Brown, Gazman, Gabby Pereira, Graham Mackay, Rocketman76, Rex Reese, Happy Birthday Sam, <laughs> apparently still love from Neil, aka Bitch in Sync, Grey Dragon Claw, and Fred Fenge. You alright, James? Yeah, yeah, brilliant. I just don't understand what's going on here. That was just weird. Also, okay. I'd like to say, we did do a three-person show uh, when you weren't here, Dave, so it's in the last yeah. uh, three weeks. Oh, and did we do a three-person show last week as well? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, it was... Yeah, no, it was three. Yeah, my God, yeah. <laughs> what I love there, right, was the, the pause as we were all trying to count the number of the people that were on the show to figure <laughs> it out. What was that? <laughs> Like, um, you can support you can support Sarah. us by going to patreon.com forward slash tcgs um the various different tiers we'll be recording the uh bonus show this week um we've got uh, a live talks over planned and uh it's all it's all gonna go smoothly this month all gonna go smoothly um uh that's it for the patreon stuff before we get on to feedback james now consider what i said at the start of the show Let's get to your notes on last week's show, please. Okay, I have got some notes actually. It's um, yeah. <laughs> hey, wait, look at James. He's going for it. Go I was, on, mate. I was. I mean, I did enjoy the show a lot. I thought it was brilliant. Um, I've just got a couple of things that I just wanted to bring up. First of all, <laughs> I'm fine going as the old man. Um, if you know, like, if it's like the up marathon thing. The, oh, okay, uh, good. Up marathon. No, I don't <laughs> yeah. think that was quite. It was the that Disney was marathon. You now. could have been any Disney character, but the up. I thought I was going to be the old man. I don't know. I thought we were talking about whether because you know the grumpiness and all that kind of thing. I, I'd oh, be absolutely who, fine with who that. Who yeah. up you would be? Yeah. Well, no, it's not because the grumpiness. You know that, James, right? Is it not? What, what's the reason then? Is it just being old and out of touch and all that kind of thing? That's that's the one. Right, okay, <laughs> that's the Got one. It. It's the it's the age thing. I think it's the age thing. Well, either way, I'm I'm totally fine with that. Um, the only <laughs> okay, cool. The other two things. There's two other things I wanted to bring up. One of them is Matt trying to drop me in it. The whole what? time, well, like, what it, it was. Come on, Matt. It was like it was awful. Like you just, you, Dave. You were giving your feedback, and then Matt was like, "Oh, you know. Oh, I noticed that James had a few digs against you as well." Are you, Matt, when you oh, were yeah, in school, you were a little bit of a grass. Yeah, mate. were you like that in school? Were you like, oh, you know, actually, uh, we were supposed to do a test today, um, you know, to the teacher and stuff like that. Look, and there's nothing wrong with a good old test, but <laughs> That's just... I just had to make it clear. Yeah, what what's that about? Why are you grassing me up? Well, I, it's not. I'm just reminding David. Just, a, just a little bit of a yeah. No, reminder. no, that's just another way of saying I was grassing you up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> good <laughs> reminder. <laughs> still digs. Not very nice. Uh, only a, other no, thing. You were doing the digs. I was doing the reminding. Very different. Yeah. Wait, hold on, hold on, slow down. So, is that all it was, James? It was just that one bit. I think it was that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, see, again, I can't remember that. It's just you know, maybe there's more. I'm really that. sorry. That's such a, such a weight of evidence. I'm not sure how I'm going to recover. <laughs> well, that, 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 I mean, that one's pretty damning, Matt. I mean, that's the the main one. It's pretty damning. So you know, I, I okay. go for that. Anything else? <laughs> okay. Only one other thing, and that was the bit when you were talking about Connect. And I mean, I just want to reiterate: voice commands never really worked properly with with Connect. It was never no, they good. Did. They didn't, no, Dave. They did. I, I remember being over your house once and you were trying to demonstrate it to me and you couldn't get it to work and it was really funny. Yeah, because you were going, in the background. And I was <laughs> going not true. Can you be quiet, please? <laughs> not true. Can you be quiet? I'm trying to make it work, right? Xbox got like, James, will you just shut the fuck up while I use this thing? It never really worked doing? properly. Although it, uh, it did give me one of my best moments with when with I Asher when he was a kid. Like he was how old was he? When was when did Connect come out? I've forgotten. Uh, let's just say he was three years old or something. Yeah, we went on holiday no. somewhere and like he walked into like this into the hotel room that we were staying in and walked up to the TV and just shouted Xbox on at it, which was which was great. I enjoyed Love that. Lovely stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, is that it for your feedback? Yeah, that's all I've got, yeah. Um, what did you think about the actual story, though, James? I mean, are you now tempted to get a Sky Glass TV because Connect is back? No. It, well, it wouldn't be supported where I'm living now anyway, so, yeah, it's no good. Oh. Reminder to our listeners that that is in Germany. James, it's so good to have you back. I've really, really missed you, mate. It's good to have you back on the show, yeah. Really missed where's, the reverb um where's this uh, going Matt, do you want to oh, get to no it's not prick. it's just it's fine we it's you, Matt, do you want to go I, look if i don't mention it you know we're going to get like 10 times the amount of emails if i do you know what i mean do, do you want to cut cutting up, down mate? the emails yes i love a curtains up go mate. on tomorrow i've got a curtain rail turning up so <laughs> okay, that's half of it that's half the bow isn't it when are the actual curtains turning up? Well, I want to get the rail up first, and then I'm going to measure the curtains. Oh, so, you you're know. putting the rail up? Yeah. That's not happening this side of Christmas, is it? It's definitely going to it's happen. N- I've, Dave, you should see the amount not. of stuff that I've built over the last month. It's insane. And I told you... I, I don't give a fuck, mate. You're living in... Like, the moment the sun comes up, the place is illuminated. What are you doing? <laughs> Just... How... How are you living like that? It is a bit annoying. Like, although it's not too bad because in the mornings, like here, we have to like take the kids to school really early in the morning. Like, we have to leave right. the house at like quarter past seven, and it's dark, okay. so it doesn't really matter. But uh, on the weekend, it is a bit irritating. <laughs> but right, how long have you lived there now? Uh, about two months now. Two months, yeah. And you can't. You haven't even got curtains. No, what are you doing? It's been James? Other things have been more important to deal with. Also, also, I don't know. Right, maybe I'm an idiot and I don't know, but I think that you think that putting up curtains will mean that there'll be no more reverb. No, no. Of course, I know that that's. It's going to help, but it's not going to make things better. I it's mean, not the other make thing, a single bit of difference. Well, no, what the other, other measures thing, are you doing? I've to got some other stuff. Reverb. I've got some. I've got some rugs coming. As well, so I'm hoping that's going right. to help. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, that's it, is it? it <laughs> pretty is. much. Yeah. It's curtains and rugs. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, we, you've got to do something. Well, no, I need to put you some. Can't... I need to put some more things up around the room because it's just the room's too empty. Still, is the problem. That's hence all the. How? What do you mean? Two months. Dave, this when we moved into this place, there was literally nothing in any room at all. Like, we had to build right. everything. And now there's literally some things in every room. <laughs> yeah. You do know that I've moved before, right? Yeah. Have you moved to a place where there's no kitchen ever? No, what, what are you talking about? There had no kitchen at all. Okay, we, we were lucky because there was part of a kitchen. Like oh, here. Right. Okay then, so stop so, fucking moaning. Yeah, yeah, so there was a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dave, have you ever moved to a place with no kitchen? Because I haven't. Do you know do you know do you know what I'll tell you what's worse than the than the, the curtains? There's still not a light in the in the bathroom, which is really annoying. What? What? <laughs> How have you <laughs> No, it's just it's not good. Like I, I don't look can we just move on? No, no, I don't no, want to no, get no, into no, it. No, 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 no. Like, is there what? not like a light bulb hanging from the ceiling? Is there no light fixture at all? What's the deal? There's a light fixture, but it's just wires hanging out the wall at the moment. And so I need to deal with that. And I haven't got round to it yet. In the bathroom, James? That's yeah. dangerous. No, mate. no, it's, it's up in the, Are you kidding in the me? ceiling. No, I'm not joking. Well, no, because it's, yes, it's. It's up in the ceiling where the, all the steam from the shower and shit. Yeah, no, 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 no. They're not exposed wires. It's like, you know, they've been like taped over and everything. So it's fine. It's just that oh, I need they've to. They've been taped over. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, Matt, they've been taped oh, over. Don't worry about tape. it. That's all good. Yeah, James, <laughs> I, I would probably prioritise the bathroom light and then yep. move on from there. It's all right. The curtains. I mean, it's just at night. It's a bit annoying, but then it's fine because there's another yeah. like guest Dark toilet, it, right? so you can just go in there, and it's there's light in there, so it's fine. Wow. Okay. That's quite yeah. an insight. Right. That's so you're showering in that guest toilet, are you? Well, no. I've, yeah, but I'm not going to shower in the dark, am I? I just wait in the, until the morning. <laughs> or, or occasionally, occasionally, I get my mobile phone and then I switch the like the the, uh, oh, the lamp on that, man, that and then leave that in there. Where is that shining? No, 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 it's, I mean, it's, pre- it's pretty good because it's on that wall. You go in there and it's it's quite romantic at that time of night. It's, it's pretty good. It's not romantic. That is not romantic. At no point, right? So we've got a light in our bathroom. Call me old-fashioned. We've got a light in our bathroom. At no point have I gone, come here, Joe. Don't turn the light on. I'm just going to put the torch on my phone on because it's romantic. <laughs> There's, 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 no point has that ever happened. No, no, it's like there's the mist, you know, from the steam, from the shower. It looks pretty cool. Okay. James, what's happened um, to you? What do you <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't even know. I, do you know what I think, Matt? 
that these are all elaborate made up stories because he hasn't moved to Germany. He's still in Canterbury <laughs> and this is a way of stopping the listeners knowing exactly where he lives. Yeah, I think this is all elaborate. just made up. It's, it's just there's, there's <laughs> yeah. just a lot when you move countries there's a lot of things to deal with and it's like it's yeah, irritating. Yeah, but but curtains isn't one of them. Like not at any point do they say, look, listen, when you're moving to a different country, remember curtains. Like they never they never say when you move into a different country they might not have a light in the bathroom. And if they, if, if they don't, then just leave it for a bit. Because <laughs> that's well, no, the advice. It's, about- it's true. Like, all, all apartments in Germany, when you move in here, they're completely empty. Like, we've got lucky with the, with the kitchen. Because in general, there's so not kitchens. So fill them up, then. But you, exactly, but it takes time Can to do that. Can we get on that. to right, something okay. else? Yeah, go on. Okay, yeah. I, uh, before we move on to the feedback from our listeners, I, w- I have got my own bit of feedback, actually. Something that I noticed while listening back, and I'm just going to ask you straight out, Matt. And this might fall flat on his face, but I do need to ask you. Have you ever played Monkey Ball? Uh, yeah, on the GameCube. Really? Because when, we were ta- when I listened back to me talking about it, you definitely sounded like you've never played Monkey Ball. No, I definitely have. Definitely have. Okay, All right, I'll let you off. What, what, you what, off. what, what bit of it test. was I not sure about? Uh, there was a couple of questions that you had, and I thought, well, if he's played Monkey Ball, he knows the answer to that, surely. Well, I mean, you, you said this Monkey Ball changed, so whatever my questions were, they're probably just making sure okay. it wasn't, hasn't changed that much. I'm now, I, the more you talk, the less I'm convinced that you've played Monkey Ball. No, of course I've played a Monkey Ball. <laughs> okay, let's I played the Monkey, monkey Ball. The monkey Matt, have you played the one on, the, on iOS? Is that what this is? That came Maybe out with the original iPhone. Is the Monkey Balls on iOS? I didn't. I wasn't aware of that. But no, I played Monkey Ball. I played. I played Monkey Ball. So and I love <laughs> okay, it. Right. It's probably my favorite. <laughs> probably my favorite game actually of all time. The Monkey's <laughs> Ball. Right. Okay. Let's get on to the list. I love feedback. the Monkey's Ball. Okay. We're we're with you. Let's go. Uh, John the John has emailed re James the editor while I have signed a petition to get Capone back in the editing chair I believe someone else on the team is chomping at the bit for, for the same privilege <laughs> last week Dr Farley well this is two weeks ago actually I saved this two weeks ago Dr Farley shyly confessed to being the only TCGS member who actively listens to the show even though he does not have editing duties half the work is already done he would just need to strap on a pair of sound peats and let the keyboard shortcuts take care of the rest plus he has the chops we all heard his musical mixing skills firsthand. I look forward to hearing his edit in the near future cheers from John the John I'm a bit confused by this because I said that Occasionally, I've listened to the show, but not often. I don't listen to it every week. Uh, no, I think you're saying that you're the only one that didn't listen to it. Any uh, is that a typo? This email says he actually listens to the show, even though he doesn't edit. Right. Okay. Fine. Listen, James. Mm-hmm. Would you do an edit? Yeah, sure. There's the first hurdle. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> Matt. Should we let him edit? Um, I'm not sure. I'll have to have a talk with you off air about this. I am absolutely. See, I don't think it's a good idea. The only problem with doing this, right, is I'd be completely happy to do this, and I'd like to give it a try, actually. But the problem is, is I don't know if I could do the tight turnaround that this show requires, and it not to be a disaster. Well, I it think that's quite kind of what we're going it? for. To yeah. be fair, I, I'm I'm more worried about him saying, "Oh, oh I don't like this bit. I made, I was made to look stupid." Like the show will get he'll go upload is like twelve minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my fear, Matt. Um, maybe well, maybe it's James, that we need to. Talk are you kind of suggesting we record a show two weeks early and then you have two <laughs> weeks to edit it? Maybe I could do a bonus show. What do you think? Oh God! All right, that well, that'd we'll, be a good we'll... start. That'd be a great um, yeah, <laughs> good practice. Oh, God. for the real gig. All right, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get into the next one. Next is someone who calls themselves the outlandish Gary Dusen. Uh, Dear Computer Game Show, my favourite part of last week's episode was exactly two hours and six minutes in when Matt went into full QVC mode and talking about his new OLED Switch purchase. Highlights include, I love the white colour, and but, if, <laughs> but you put them side by side, even not put them side by side. Um, I don't know what I meant now. <laughs> Matt, I think you have, a, you have made a great choice. And I'm glad you're happy with your purchase. Also, I do think you should career, uh, consider a career on a shopping channel. Uh, appreciate you. <laughs> that is pretty good. We, we've got other that people talk about good. me and, and my, my, my poor description of the OLED, so I'll, I'll, 
I'll crack on with the other stuff as well. Um, Garrison Savannah. First well, off, wait sc- before you. Sorry, wait before you move on. Can we do that as a? T- can we do that as a video, please? Where you could do that easily, right? You've got the green screen stuff. You can um, have a background where you you've got QVC or whatever, and you're trying to s- sell the switch. Can we just do a short little video of you doing that? Um, but if I tried to do it, it's not going to be as funny or piss poor. Just from- okay, all right. So what I've got to do then is I've got to be there while you do it, and I've just got to give you a product. That's <laughs> that's what we've got to do, and then you've got to sell it on the spot. Well, you know, I think, yeah, I mean, we'll we can, think about we can it. It's defi- a good idea. We can definitely get some stuff off Amazon. You know, that would be uh, <laughs> that would be perfect. Yeah, just send it to him. He can't open it. Yeah. He, he's got to open it on the stream. Mm-hmm. That's a stream. <laughs> G- gaming accessories. Oh. I think it would be. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, maybe someone can help us out. I know that there's PR people listening. Maybe you could help us out and we can send stuff to Matt for him to sell on a QVC style stream. <laughs> but he's not allowed to see what it is until he's opened it. <laughs> oh, that's the, that's the way to do it. Oh, this sounds good. Okay, I've Q- got an yeah, idea. Is that, is that QVC go. GS? I don't know. Um, Shut up, Matt. Stop thinking about the branding. Thinking about the content. Oh, fuck, all right. I thought <laughs> the branding now. Um, Garrison Savannah. First of all, as a Scottish person, I can't sanction Matt's horrific attempt at a Scottish accent. It was not good. Yeah, I saw a couple of comments about this in a week, um, and you're all wrong. Um, on the Switch OLED and Metroid Dread, I feel like uh, the bigger screen fitting in the same size package and removing the bezels makes it look much more quality, even without switching it on. The large bezels make the original Switch design look a bit dated and cheap. I do agree with Dave, though. As I play my 90% docked, the upgrade makes no sense for me. Me. if i end up commuting to work regularly again i would definitely consider it i'm uh glad matt is enjoying dread i was worried that being chased by the emmys would be too much for him uh, i'm also really enjoying it and i feel like the emmy sections have gone a bit uh, have a bit of a roguelike feel you don't go back too far and you uh, but you do lose your map progress so you do have to kind of remember where you went last time and try and figure out where to go next uh, still really enjoying the pod it's a highlight each week and it's also been good having Ian and Sarah on as guests they're both quality additions to the pod when they're on I listened to the end for the socials each week Matt and was rewarded by the <laughs> announcement of Matt Effect last week uh, which I'm super excited for uh, thank you Garrison cool. Yeah, thanks for the thanks for the email. Um, and we'll, we'll we'll start on Gino's email. Good day, TCGS community traders. Really enjoyed this week's podcast with Dave, Matt, and Sarah. Matt's review of the Metro of Metroid and the OLED Switch really convinced me that they are premium <laughs> products worth getting. <laughs> and I'm currently <laughs> breathing my way through dread. Um, is it, yeah, should, should, should I I'd love to know how many times you said premium about, in yeah. in that section. I listen back I, 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 there's got to be a premium count somewhere. Uh, I'd love to many. see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, is that it? Uh, well, I'll, I'll carry on with Gino's email. Uh, Matt, uh, no, I must admit, I was a bit skeptical of the Blue Yeti prom- uh, promotion competition as I was worried you had sold out and gone the way of the US podcast. I needn't have worried. Your ads are all funny and did a great job of convincing me that Blue Yeti mics are premium products. Um, okay, that's I, and fine, then, but they're not paying this week, so uh, yeah, let's, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do listen to socials each week and I'm kept abreast of upcoming streams so it's a wonderful channel keep up this a premium pro- okay okay, we, we get it we get it Gino um, <laughs> but, okay Phil not that one how is it that David like James is repulsed by card games but loves poker in VR hmm because, because one's a game of snap the other one it is oh I've got to upgrade to the ra- I can't it, that's too many levels I can't do that because poker's um, good you know that's the, the thing oh James <laughs> oh, is saying what we're all thinking can't believe you said that <laughs> have you been playing some James no not recently but I as oh, I said you, you I text me and saying I want to play mm. poker stars right okay we'll do that we'll do mm-hmm. that this week shall we yeah yeah we can do that definitely. Um, yeah maybe we could do like a little test stream mm-hmm. to you know how are we going to are, do are you able to stream from your your Oculus map? Um, I don't know. My PC is quite good enough. I will have to investigate. I'll leave off. How much money have you pulled into that thing? Of course, <laughs> it's good enough. No, I haven't upgraded. I haven't upgraded the PC since, since last year, and they were hardly up top of the range. <laughs> oh, right, that's what I was going to say last week. It's <laughs> you do know that Sean streams directly from his Oculus. I think you'll be all right, mate. I don't know. I've, Sean's PC might be better than mine. Mine's just got lights. Well, okay. Doesn't mean it's more powerful. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought that does mean it's more powerful. That's, yeah, that's weird. Um, um, that is it for. We should do something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We should. We should. We should. Uh, uh, is that it for feedback? Yes. Uh, why are you asking me? We've because I want to do my there. bit at the end. 
<laughs> okay, go on then. Okay, if you want to leave us feedback, go to tcgs.co slash dear tcgs. You know, Matt did a good job of the news last week, but it's nice to have the news goblin back. Yeah. He's you, raring to go. James, you didn't give any feedback on my news uh, reading. I no. mean, take that as a good sign, if anything. Yeah, uh, was... Usually James gets non-stop uh, criticism over his news, so the fact that we didn't get a single email about it is pretty I mean, pretty the good, fact right? that James didn't mention it, I'm led to believe he skipped the news. He's like, I'm Ooh. not doing it. What Did you listen to the news bit last week, James? I did, yeah. It was... It was fine. It was all right. It was totally adequate. Thank you. Yeah. Have you got any tips for Matt? Um, not really. I mean, I was quite. No I was. I was worried. Um, when I when I because I suddenly realised, oh no, Matt's going to do the news, and I just thought it's just going to be <laughs> like it's just going to be like tons of stories where it's just basically just reading out some information and then everyone going. Yeah. Imagine that. And that. Yeah. It's uh, but no discussion obviously, no debate, you know, just like oh, here's another press release. But it wasn't too bad, but then I think that's mostly cuz I'd imagine Dave you probably got rid of all the stuff that was like that. No, I barely got involved last week. I was I was uh, I was really busy, but um uh I did suggest that I do the news and Matt was like, "No, no, I'll do it." And I was like, okay, should I do the questions? He was like, nope, me. And I was like, okay. And well, then about it's a, isn't it a bit weird if the host then suddenly like does a segment? I mean, we it just made sense. Yeah, you, know, you do the host. You're saying bit. I'm above it. Didn't, no, it wasn't saying I like that, that thinking. At all. Wasn't saying I like that, that thinking, Matt. No, nice. I was just saying it's James. You finally like, realizing, saying, you know, like he can he can just do whatever he does and hosting started and me and you do the heavy lifting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but all right. Way, I mean, let's get to the news. Well done, Matt. Well done. Thank um, you. Anyway. Oh, I have actually not really been looking forward to this because I started putting all these together today and it's just horrible because it's just a mess of just information and it's just annoying because it's just it's normally you just get a story and you can just read a headline then you can discuss it but this one it's just ridiculous number of information and it's like I don't know what you're going to ask it's me ridiculous. what number of information was it a lot of Ten? numbers a lot of numbers just <laughs> plenty of numbers is it um I, I mean you should be as the news person excited at the amount of information that's no, involved because in the, the news trouble story, is, is usually I like to just think okay I can just do a summary of this but then I don't know what you're going to ask me about these so I've had to note down everything like pretty much because I'm not sure what you're going to go for and it's just I mean I hate do you that. remember that one week Matt where he was getting quotes from people that yeah. were contacting him and stuff like that and it was like really exciting yeah was doing we were actually actual getting job. news breaking on the podcast yeah and we were like oh, this is the way to go james and now you're furious that you have to read a bit of an article that someone else has written but look okay the first story is about fifa and i don't have set blatter's number you know so i don't i know he's not even at fifa anymore is he <laughs> no he's a uh, he's, 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 he's not even a president <laughs> <laughs> up to date James Farley <laughs> with the world of football go on anyway okay so apparently FIFA doesn't want to have an exclusive license deal anymore um, with EA so they basically said they, they've said this is FIFA's quote <laughs> who the fuck is going to buy it other than them I don't like, <laughs> what the, do they know video games well they've been they've been, wor- <laughs> they've been working with EA for like 30 years now on this but this is what FIFA have said they said FIFA is bullish and excited about the future in gaming and esports for football, and it is clear right. that this space. Oh, they've used esports for football. Okay, okay. And it is clear that this <laughs> e football. <laughs> very excited for e football. Oh, you should play it. You should play it. <laughs> God. Then it says. Then it says, and it is clear that this needs to be a space that is occupied by more than one party controlling all rights. Technology and mobile companies are now actively competing to be associated with FIFA, its platforms and global tournaments. I mean, that the second part there is is the thing, isn't it? Is they uh, get more money? I think is uh, they're expecting to get from yeah, all but these. From who? I I, I mean, they're really not. Uh, there's no bigger gap than uh, the, the, ever in the history of gaming than there is right now between FIFA and any other football game. Mm-hmm. Like, what what are they thinking? Are they... What I don't get what they're going for here. Sorry, go on. Well, draw some more. So it says, Gaming and esports are the fastest growing media verticals on the planet, with new and diverse types of games launching continuously. It is therefore of crucial importance for FIFA and its stakeholders to maximise all future opportunities for football and gaming fans. I don't know what that means. Huh. It's just nonsense, isn't it? Uh, but they've said... So, uh- I mean, they've said. Do you reckon they've? Do you reckon they've been talking? You know, there was that new football game that was announced a couple of months ago, Matt. Yeah. 
Do you reckon they're talking to the developers of that? Maybe? Like, who are they talking? They're certainly not talking about eFootball, are they? No. I mean, I, I don't think it's in this news story, James, but I'm sure they're saying the other day about like, FIFA wanted, well, the, the rumours that they were doubling it and it was already in the billions like, that's, for the license. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's, can you even yeah. afford it? That's what I was just getting to because apparently what's happened is they've been negotiating with EA for two years and they want to double the payments. They want it, it's like they want a billion dollars for each four year World Cup cycle. Um, from EA for the um, for this, and that's apparently why talks have now stalled. But apparently, it's not just about that. It's also because they can't agree on the terms of what the deal should cover. Because EA want to use the FIFA license, you know, for video game tournaments and stuff like that, and apparently for NFTs as well for some reason. But FIFA Yay. doesn't want to just give that to EA. They want to do that themselves somehow. I don't know how. But uh, yeah, that, that's the plan. I always love it when there's a big bargaining process going on and one side has no cards to play. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Now, I'm not a big fan of FIFA, like the video game. I'm not a big fan of EA. But when you've got like FIFA, the company, saying, well, listen, if you ain't going to give us this money, we'll go elsewhere. Like, <laughs> like EA are going, go on then, have a look. Have a look at what you've got to choose from. And go and see if they've got any money to give you because you've got no choice here. It's either us or nobody. Like, it's such a weird... Like, what? Those conversations must be strange, man. What a weird thing to do. No one else is going to be able to afford it. I mean, even even, EA, like, "Mm, it's a bit pricey. Like, who... Average and Blizzard, are they going to start, like, a FIFA game just because they buy a license? Or maybe Microsoft will just acquire FIFA. There's, uh, there's no way. There's no way. Like, like, d- yeah, you know, it's too much of a risk to bring out a football game at this at this stage, like a brand new mm. franchise to pile billions of dollars into it. But it's also the thing is, is that EA have also just renewed their license for the is it the fifth Pro? Fifth Pro. Yeah, they yeah, they've they've just did, yeah. so they still get all the player names, likenesses, and official leagues and all that kind of thing this is just the name isn't it basically that they're getting on here yeah. so this is why apparently- i guess I, there must be more to it than that but I, I just think you know maybe ea regretting calling fifa fifa for this long um at this point but really i i don't think fifa the company have got much of a uh, an like they've not got much of an argument in this mm. this sounds mad I think this is this will all be settled. You know, I think they'll retain the name next year. I mm-hmm. think it'll all be settled eventually when <laughs> when FIFA go out there and go right. What other football games uh, are out there? E football. Okay, stick that on. Let's watch a bit of that. Let's let's watch the reviews for that. See how that's going down. Okay. Any others? Nope. Uh, Ooh, well. Have we still got EA's number? Yep. Okay, give them a call. <laughs> that's, that's all we got. See, and also, uh, there's okay. been a trademark filing as well in in the UK in the like intellectual uh, property office for a uh, EA Sports FC uh, has been. Um, oh yeah, has oh, been yeah. Right. Like, like Matt recall, reported last year, yeah. uh, last week. I know. I thought I'd just uh, reiterate that on what we were talking oh, yeah. about. You, it's further proof that you skipped Matt's news. Yeah, last definitely week. didn't listen. Yeah. Definitely well, didn't listen. Just, uh, just uh, James, why did you say I just thought I'd reiterate? Well, what, just, absolute, what are you talking bollocks. about? No, I'm just, I just, you know, saying because it's part of the conversation we're just having. So I thought I'd just, you know, add that in as a little yeah, bit just of to remind um, you. Bit extra. Yeah, I'd also like to remind bit of extra you. Extra what? You know, you are you are allowed to repeat bits of news. You know, it's like things. You know, if they are important for the context, you can repeat it. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's go to the next news story. Actually, actually, no, no. Just before we do, <laughs> um, so feedback. How that works is, I collect all the feedback from the doc. I don't these days go to Twitter. I just remembered, remembered a massive bit of feedback of everyone saying the fact that they, you know, the the, the potential bet that Sarah and I had about the name of oh, FIFA. Oh, I didn't see anything on this. Okay, and, yeah. You know, like, oh, yeah, they'll never caught a soccer in the UK, and everyone tweeting us pictures of. FIFA uh, 94, 95, which is FIFA International Soccer, um, and uh, and and some other games which all had soccer, sensible soccer, um, yeah. So, so you should have taken but, that bet, Matt, and not been such a coward. <laughs> oh, that wow. backfired, didn't it, Matt? Wow, James. Well, no, but it, 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 it was more the fact that it was like an open-ended, there's like four different ways that Sarah could win, and I just said, no, it'll be one global no, brand. 
No, yes, it, it was. was. It was like, this no, or if I do this or if the day of the no, week it ends wasn't. in a Y. Matt, it was as clear as day. They won't call it soccer in the UK. That was that was the bet. It was as simple as that. She she really made it simple, black and white. It was so clear. And you you bottled no, it. No, and it wasn't clear at the time. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you totally did. <laughs> okay, let's get us a news news story. Come on. Okay, so there the news, was news story. There the was news, an Animal Crossing story. direct. Um, yeah, that was. Oh was, yes. I mean, it went on for a long time, didn't it? It was. It was. I mean, this was much more extensive than I was expecting. I mean, they unveiled version two, which is coming on the fifth of November. Do you want? To, do you want me to go through all the things they announced? Because it's a ridiculous list. Oh, yeah, but it's before just, we do, I thought this was not. an excellent, excellent Animal. Um, I thought it was excellent. I, I yeah. loved it. You, you seem a bit down there when you're just starting to describe this story, but I thought you'd be pumped about this, James. No, I am. I'm, it's just there's the sheer amount of information here of like of things. They, I mean, I was reading. I can't remember where I read this, but they were saying like it's basically like a year's worth of updates in one update, and it's you know in terms of Animal mm. Crossing, and it feels like that because there's just so much stuff here. I mean, I'm really pleased with a lot of the stuff they've shop, added to shop's this. Shop's still the same, isn't it? Is the shop still? Yeah, the that's same all still the same, that? obviously. But you know, oh, okay. but the but some of the other stuff they've added here. Yeah, it, I mean, they've. You're so snarky about all this, but you're you are right in the sense that this is all stuff that should have come about a year ago, or you know, it, it could have been sort of you know put out slowly over time rather than just leaving it, it right to the end. And it's this is it. And I mean, I, you know, this stuff all seems fine. Then they get to the end of it and go, and that's it. We're not updating it anymore. Yeah, which and it's like, yeah. well, what the fuck, man? Like, and the thing that's weird about on. that is that when they said, okay, we're not updating it, but there's this paid DLC, and then you're thinking, okay, well, maybe they're just going to... They, they want to run this as like a games-as-a-service thing. You know, that's what everyone kind of wanted Animal Crossing to be, it feels like. And you think, okay, this is the first one of those, and then they're just going to keep expanding it. Nope, this is the only one they're going to do. And it's just like, what, what are they thinking? I just don't yeah, understand it's this. it's so bizarre, that stuff. Right, so, okay, so the big things are, we're finally getting a coffee shop, and I was like, oh, cool, the coffee shop, what can you do in it? I'll just fight, invite people over for coffee. Okay, fine. Um, they've added what the the new camera stuff. Well, no, that's all right. The stuff that's more substantial is, I mean, they've got cap and back so that you can, you know, travel yeah, over to other islands. Cool. That's pretty good. But you're only going to another island, though. You're only doing what you did with. It's basically um, the same, yeah, as that. It's just that yeah. You the get... only difference is is that it'll be in a different time and a yeah. different um, season. That's yeah. the, the changes. But then are. the major big thing here is the Harv's Island, like big revamp because i mean i've i've been to that island once i've only, i went there once and it was creepy and weird and i was like i'm not going back here again but then now they're setting it so that you basically all of the people that come to visit are going to be there so that's brilliant because that means that you know visiting red or whatever you'll be able to get like art presumably more quickly you'll be able to get like all the other stuff more quickly and you have to wait for them to turn up on your island I think this is pretty good. I was really pleased with that. And they've also added, like, um, yeah, the fortune teller and, like, the old mayors there and, you know, the custom. there's more customisation options as well they've added. There's just a lot... This, there's a lot of good stuff here, I think. It's, yeah, it's I think really good. Awesome. There the fact, is. The fact that you think... kind of helped to build it up and new shops yeah. and stuff are like, oh, that's really exciting. I'll tell you what it feels like. It feels like with New Leaf, they did, this, they did a similar kind of thing where right at the end of its life, they introduced, a like, a campsite thing, like, to it, which... And then they added, like... Uh, like a mile system and all that kind of stuff. And it feels a bit like that. Like, this is obviously like a last sort of like throw of the dice for this version of the game. And I just think that's a huge shame, you know, that they're, that they're kind of abandoning it at this stage, you know, when it's it's still really popular. There's still a lot of people playing it and there's still a lot of life in it, I think. It's just a shame, you know, that they're, that they're giving up so far. I, I, and I think that's that's part of why I looked at this direct and sort of just thought, okay, the, the, all this stuff is fine. But firstly, this should have been out when the game was, you know, really popular. Like that that first, you know, when everyone was playing it, that was... Oh yeah. And and the second thing was that there's nothing here that's going to make me want to go back to it. Like, yeah, really? this, the stuff on Harv's Island is fine, but it's the characters that... Most of, the, most of it is the characters that we know that just used to turn up every now and then. But yeah. now that they can be just be ex- excess access whenever you know the the cap and stuff is great but uh, you know you're going to an island and you know it'll be a different season or whatever that's fine but 
Is that enough to make me go, okay, I'm going to go back to it? I mean, the major thing that they're adding, I think, to the base game is like the cooking stuff and all that as well. Like how you can grow vegetables and all that kind of thing. And you can, you know. Yeah, about that, what what does that, what does that really do? I mean, you grow vegetables, cool, we can cook meals, but it's ultimately just gives you a bit of energy as would eating a standard apple. Or, or just you know more. present it, but ultimately you can say that about pretty much everything in the game. You know, it's it's all like, yeah, that's what I do. The game, wasn't sure. Yeah, you know, it's, it's cool to be able to cook things, grow things, but I, if there's any other benefit, okay, I get it's that. Another, but if it's, it's literally the same. It's basically another addition to the doll's house. That's what it is. It's just another thing that you can add. That's you know that you can you know, decorate your house with and stuff like that. But then the bigger expansion is the. Uh, Happy Home Paradise that they've added, which is the paid DLC. Yeah, about that, sorry. So um, I was watching this direct, and then, you know, it said, yeah, this is all coming. And, like, this is the last free update. And then it had, like, the Nintendo sign. I was like, brilliant. Close that window. Oh, on Twitter. You know, like, I thought that was excellent. I was a bit disappointed at the end of it when they said it'd be the last free update. And some people were like, well, no, it's still going, Matt. I was like, what? It's, there's a whole second half of that direct. It's weird that they kind of ended it with a, well, it felt like a very much a half time ending. And I just, I, I left, but. Anyway, there's a whole second part, which I missed originally. Yeah, and this, I mean, this is also kind of following on from the, the playbook that they had with New Leaf as well, because they, they had Happy Home Designer, which came out um, on the 3DS, which, I mean, I I reviewed that a long time ago, and it's it it's basically exactly the same thing as, as that, it appears, which is where... You, you you sort of go to this you know to islands and then you have to you have clients that you work for and then you have to like design homes and houses and everything according to what they what they want but the the big hook with this is that you can then take these designs and you can take elements of it back into your own island as well which is i think what a lot of people will probably be very interested in doing when my children like when rachel and asher saw this they were incredibly excited because Rachel spent a lot of time with Happy Home Designer because it had a lot more uh, customizable options than the the base game does. So she was really excited by this, and I think it does look pretty good. It's just a shame that this is all it's probably going to be, and there's this is you know where they're going. But then the ma- major feature of this also was the way that this is connected now with this Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack. And this was the weirdest thing about the entire Direct, was how they kind of dropped the whole information about the expansion pack as part of this Direct. And it was very confusing, and nobody really knew, seemed to know what was going on. It was very odd. It's a classic Nintendo thing, isn't it? They announced something, and afterwards you're going... Well- what what is this? Is this does this? What, so what if I have this? this and What's, yeah, it's just yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just a complete mess, doesn't it? Yeah. So at first um, I said, hey, this expansion is twenty five quid. I'm like, you know, it's a lot. It's you know, that's quite a lot for expansion pack, uh, expansion or DLC. But it looks it looked fantastic. I thought I'm I'm definitely going to get it. And then they say it's part of that. I'm like, well, how? But how? We don't even know how much that is. And then hmm. the prices start coming out, don't they? Should we move on to that? To the uh, the thing, yeah, the stuff. On. So anyway, so they introduced this premium tier, um, which we already knew about, but they finally given pricing on it, and it goes live on the twenty sixth of October. So that's Tuesday next week, and it also includes this Happy Home Paradise as well, which is coming on the fifth of November. So the t- what's going to happen is the twelve month subscription will now cost uh, thirty five pounds or fifty dollars. That's for like an individual membership. What's interesting about this is you can't. It, you can't buy these on a monthly anymore. It has to be like a year subscription um, instead. Oh, really? Yeah, which is which is different. So I think if you still want a monthly subscription, you can you only can take like the base like Nintendo Online pack or whatever it is. But then there's also the uh, the family subscription as well, which has gone up to fifty nine ninety nine or you know sixty quid or eighty dollars, and that supports up to eight accounts. Um, so yeah, and then what they've done is they prorated the discount. So if you've already paid for it, then you get money back or whatever, and it it kind of works. And uh, yeah, but oh right, so they are offering refunds for people that yeah. already got you know they're like six months into their and, um, subscription or whatever. And it's it's one of those things where I think this is not a bad idea. Like if they're doing this as like a, a value add for this for this like higher tier. I mean, this is how much it costs is what I was expecting. You know, like we talked about this on the show and I said it was going to be about 50 quid or whatever like that and I was right with this, I think. This is one case where I, I was right for a change. It doesn't happen very often. But... Well, that's it, a subtle way of slipping in a little brag. Go yeah, yeah, just... It, it, come on, Dave, it never happens. It's just, you know, it's, it's annoying. Okay. But um, anyway, so 
But how do you feel about this? Like this, this the pricing for this? Because right, I, here's here's the thing, right? If I trusted Nintendo a little bit more, I'd be fine with it. Like we were talking about how this um, Animal Crossing update is part of the the subscription plan, um, and then. Um, we were saying, well, if they're going to add expansion passes to the subscription, then that's great. But They're not going to do that, are they? I mean, the history <laughs> tells us that that's not what they're going to do. I mean, if you remember correctly, the whole reason for us getting Nintendo Online at one point was so that we could play online games via the app, yep. which launched with Mario Kart and Splatoon. Splatoon 2 and a year later the only games on that app were Mario Kart and Splatoon <laughs> like it's I mean that's crazy mm. that's crazy and I guess that's another reason why I wasn't excited about the Animal Crossing stuff is that I felt so burnt by that game mm-hmm. for what how long has it been out a, a year and a half yeah and you just kind of think well I felt so let down by the time I was finished playing it that I'm not going to buy back into it because I don't want to be let down again. Like they're starting to lose my trust for this stuff. But, but, but you um, got months and months of enjoyment out of it. Yes, they didn't expand upon that. Yes, they didn't continue to add to it. But I mean, even if there was nothing else after that, that initial launch, I'd be happy with you know the fact that I got I me through lockdown. I think part of the months of enjoyment was the looking forward to where it was going. Mm. And then when I re- when I got there, I was like, oh, nowhere is the answer. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it was. So, yeah, if that content was rolling out monthly from that launch date, brilliant. Like, I, I'd probably still be playing it. But because it just stopped for ages, it made me completely lose interest. And and that that's the thing with well, this. Like, if they do start to add other expansion stuff to this and all that, then brilliant. But they're not going to do it, are they? Like, this is going to be... I don't think This will be the only thing that will happen. And it will be... It, that'll be it. And it's, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we get hardly any N64 or Mega Drive games either. Like, they're going to come out, like, drip feed one at a time. And it's funny because I saw this post the other day where somebody was, like, booted up, like, a Wii U. And they were, like, looking at, like, what was available to download on that. And it's insane. Like, like all of the, like, virtual console stuff and everything, it was fantastic on that, on that console. Like, they had everything, pretty yeah. much. Whereas this, it's, they really... I know, it just feels, it's just odd. Yeah, they just... Yeah. I've just loaded up the Nintendo Online app. I can't remember what year this launched, but it must be four years ago now, right? Yeah, probably. It had an update today. It's, uh, it's well, uh, yeah. It, it now has free games that <laughs> use it. Smash Brothers. Mario Kart's been taken off. What? No way. Well, no, it still worked, won't it? So it's, it's probably a, just not on Splatoon the... 2... Super Smash Brothers and Animal Crossing. They're the free games <laughs> that are offered on the service that we initially paid out for. Yeah. Like, it. it's, that is mad. And, they, and they're obviously, like with the NES and the, like, the SNES games, they're done with those now. Like they're not adding any more to those really. And no, I mean, they, they do occasionally, like it's one or two, like come out like once every six months or whatever. But that's it. And this is what is such a shame about this because it's, I mean, before when it was like, say, 19 quid or whatever for like a single user account for a year you're thinking ah, it's it's not too bad you know it's it's not like a huge amount of money but then when you're like asking like 35 quid but i don't know it just feels there's not a lot there right so i looked a couple of things with this first of all was like animal crossing 25 on this includes animal crossing well i guess i will just pony up the extra 10 pounds and see you know because i was gonna buy animal crossing anyway um i guess i was tempted with the expansion pack before sort of price but now it's only 10 pound more i'll definitely do that and they know that millions of people will do the same millions of people will probably say well it's going to buy them crossing anyway i might as well buy a pair extra 10 and see what that expansion pack's about to play some n64 games so i think that's interesting and i think that's how they're gonna you know that's how that's how they get you that's mm. how they're gonna get me i, I might mean, as well it, pay, pay another it's, tenner for the upgrade. it's certainly better value i mean i'm gonna i've got I'll have the family. I mean, my family all want to play the Happy Home Paradise stuff, so it makes sense to just have the um, you know, the family membership, which I've already got anyway. Because otherwise, I'd be paying like twenty five quid four times or whatever for it. So it it, it definitely yeah. makes sense. But it's still, I don't know. It it just feels like there is potential here, but they're not going to realise it, are they? Yeah, I was saying. Um, <laughs> I hope I that surprises. I felt like it could be Game Pass, like in that you can get regular Game Pass and that's on your console, or you get Game Pass Ultimate, where not only can you play on PC games, you can also you know play it, use X Cloud. Also, it feels like they're kind of allowing Game Pass Ultimate users to get 
demos or betas early. It just felt like if you're going to Game Pass, that's ultimately what the thing they're upselling you to. And I thought, is Nintendo Switch Online going to be like this? So yes, you can buy a standard Switch Online, but really you want to get the expansion pack because you get, well, we've got Animal Crossing, maybe we've got other DLCs and exclusive things in the future. Um, yeah, but they uh, haven't but, said but any of that. That's the thing, and I don't believe it. No, I, I I can't see them adding other big DLCs. I mean, if anything, okay. if, if in, very, in many ways, it's kind of wild they did it for this. They could have, they would easily have sold millions of this anyway at 20, 20, uh, 25 quid. And then. Not so, if you just play Animal Crossing. A lot of people out there just play Animal Crossing. So this is to get them in as well. But anyway, yeah, but, we're, we're kind yeah. of repeating ourselves. We're going over the same points. So, um, yeah. Uh, I'd I'd be yeah I'm interested to see what the future holds for that expansion pass thing. Yeah, I mean yeah, hopefully it will be all right. But we'll see. Um, anyway, cool. uh, next story is that Sony are celebrating five years of PlayStation VR uh, by giving some games away, and they're giving away three like PSVR games, but they haven't said what they are yet, so we don't know. And great. they'll be available in November. But they did reveal right. the, the top five most played PSVR games globally. Well, want... that's interesting. Go on. Okay, so Rec Room was number one. Yeah, I was about to say, Rec Room's got to be one. Oh, wait, let me try and guess the others. Go on. Um, oh, it's got to be... It's not Carnival Games, is it? No. Okay. Uh, oh, what are the other... Oh, uh, Res? Was it Res? I'll give you, can I give you a clue? Sean's a big fan of one of these. Tetris Effect? No. Oh, my God. Okay, Dave, I'll give you a clue. One of these VR porn. has been the top PSVR title in the charts for over a year. Oh, am I going to kick myself when you tell me what it is? If you don't get it, yeah. Yeah, this was revealed every week that this game has been up top of the PSVR charts for over a year. Astropot isn't one of the top three, is it? It's not, no. No, I, don't, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, uh, it should be. Uh, no, go on. Give, give, us a, give, us, give us a top three, then. Okay, so Rec Room, Beat Saber. That was the, the short one. Oh, of course. Um, PlayStation VR Worlds. Which, which it came. Oh, does that count? Apparently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the free disc that comes with the it. The free okay. disc is the most played one. Uh, Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Hold on, you said top. Okay, right. Yeah, and then, sure. And then Resident Evil 7 uh, was the other one. Uh, Resident Evil 7. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, yeah, I mean, I, if I'm talking about what games they're going to give away for free, I'm thinking it is going to be Astro Bot. I don't think it'll be Beat Saber. Probably. Um, maybe the the was it blood and whatever, blood and truth. Blood and truth. Yeah, that blood would, and truth. That'd be good. Yeah, I already own it, but yeah, I'll probably give that away for free. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, ooh, I'm just I looking about this article. Also says about which PSVR games are on the way. One of which is Moss Two. It will be very shrewd of them to give away Moss to get poor excited for the second one. They've already done that though. This is the only thing. Oh yeah, part of, yeah. Part of uh, PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Mm. They can do it again. Um, they won't remember. They they won't remember. Yeah, you're right. Well, yeah, they mean it still counts. There's some people that didn't have it back then, so mm-hmm. um, I think it still counts. But <laughs> I think it still counts, guys. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Okay, five years. Let's see what the future holds for that platform as well. It's weird, isn't it? Though, like the last year in particular, it feels like they've just kind of left it to be. Well, yeah, you know. they're working up towards launching a new one, mm. which um, I, I'll be amazed if that does as well as the first one. Yeah, me too. Especially I if it's expensive. It. It's uh, you know. Yep. Feels like totally the wrong time to release something. Anyway, yeah. Um, next story is a really see. This, this is one that I wasn't going to include, but then Sean and Matt suggested it, and they're right. It's, oh, here we it go. Is, Look, go on. Uh, I, I didn't suggest it. But... Well, no, but you you seconded it, and I was like, yeah, you're, you're right. It is a good one. Um, because oh, basically, right, so are you blaming me or were you saying? Matt, I'm trying to be nice here. Saying, Can you just yeah, fuck yeah. off? I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to give you some credit <laughs> here, and you're being a prick about it. Why? When he gets more angry, the reverb gets louder. Have you noticed that? <laughs> it's like a big booming voice comes yeah, out. Yeah, I thought we were more scared. It's just that the implication was, you're like, oh yeah, Matt, Sean suggested That was definitely it. the implication, James. I was trying to say it in a nice way, but I'm not okay. very good at that. All right, we'll work on that. Work on that delivery. Yeah, on that anyway, delivery. there's a company called Dbrand, and they launched replacement PS5 plates that were called Dark Plates. So... <laughs> This, this... I hate D-Brand, I hate them, go on. Okay, so this is their, the original quote that they said about the Dark Plates. They said, With the release of Dark Plates, the unthinkable has happened. We've taken Sony's <laughs> monumental achievement in bad design and fixed it. We can only assume that our prizes are in the mail. 
And then on their website... <laughs> fucking fuck off. On their Go website, on. there's like a section that's called Totally Legal. And they've written this statement. They said, when you look at this microscopic uh, texture inside the dark plates, what do you see? If your answer is a familiar but legally distinct apocalyptic spin on the classic PlayStation button shapes, you might be one of our lawyers. And then the, then the site said, go ahead, sue us. So, Dbrand have received a letter from Sony threatening legal action, and they've <laughs> <laughs> and they've now they've now com- <laughs> and they have complied with the it. demands. Um, so it says, <laughs> it says here in the cease and desist letter, which Dbrand has published online, but it hasn't dated it. Um, it says Sony accuses the company of trademark and copyright infringement as well as counterfeiting. So, which is which is a pretty serious like, allegation, but so D Brand have responded to this and they've stopped selling it. They've made they keep making the point that consumers should have the right to choose which parts they use to modify, upgrade, or repair their console. I think that's I don't know why they've said that because I don't think Sony's disputing that. I think it's the the copyright infringement is the the bigger problem. So they, but then they said this. They said, "Yeah, but then they're two conflicting points, then, aren't they? If mm-hmm. they're saying that you should have a choice of what parts you can use to upgrade your console or fix your console, mm-hmm. that you can't then just say copyright infringement. There's that counter acts each other's point, doesn't it? So that's that's the argument. One of the argument they're making is they're trying to say that they're they're allowing." people to modify their consoles or whatever. And I don't think Sony is saying you can't modify your console. They're just saying you can't use our, like, um, you know, symbols and stuff like that on it. Like, you can't use our... They're they're not using their symbols on it. Well, they are. That's the whole... That's what this is all about. It's they're using... You know, the... That's that's what the quote is on the website, where there's, like, there's logos that are in it that they've just changed slightly, so they look a bit different. They're they're all different. They're their D-brand logo, aren't they? That's it's there. No, don't get me wrong, right? Okay, so if well, you don't know who's and are. triangles and whatnot, yeah, but, and X's yeah, and stuff it, like but, that. It, but it's Trump, it's oh, not the really? PlayStation. Yes, that's it's not, the whole point. But it's not okay. The, but they're not the PlayStation signs because they've got little, like, they're basically like radioactive signs and little robot heads and little skull and crossbones. Yeah, well, I can't, fucking hell, right? So, so it's not squares, crosses, and triangles. I right. think there are. If you have, if you have, let me have a look because I had a look right, at it right, earlier okay. on. I'll tell you right. It, it's triangles like Wi-Fi with... logos and all that, that sort of stuff. Right. So it's a circle with. It looks like a you know, the radioactive symbol. Yeah, it's, um, it is squares and crosses and stuff. They've just modified them slightly. Like it's a circle with like a radioactive symbol in it. It's a triangle. Um, it's a square and it's a cross. It's the same. T- yeah, but they don't. Yeah, hold on. They don't own those shapes though, do they? They don't know. Yeah, so they don't it's... own a radioactive symbol. And the skull no, and crossbones and, and the, and the, and the, the robot circle. head. No, but they they do. But the, but the, the trademark is only busting into like nurseries everywhere during like you know this is a square. This is a. I'm sorry, you're going to have to take that poster down. That <laughs> we have got copyright, yeah, and that is that. your. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, but the, I'm sure that there is there is stuff in copyright law about how you can't have things which could be perceived as being like official like from Sony or whatever. Do you see what I mean? Well, here's you, the, here's the thing that, picture, that here's the thing that's nothing like, off. I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't ever think oh it looks like PlayStation logos. There's it's, I thought it's there's more something... to do with the shape of the thing and the fact that it uses their connections. There's those little hook things. But anyway, mm-hmm. look this is boring. Listen, I, if you don't know who D brand are, I've never liked them. For some reason, they've managed to sort of brand themselves nicely. But when you go on their website, you can clearly see that it's just a, another like phone covers company. But for some reason, they thought they could get away with just putting other businesses' logos all over their stuff. And when I went on it today, I noticed that clearly some of those businesses have gotten in touch and said, no, you can't have the Apple, Apple logo next to the Windows logo on the back of your mobile phone cover. Like We're not going to allow that. And suddenly that that um, design that they were touting a couple of years ago has been modified quite dramatically to remove most of the uh, the known brands from it. But I just, their, their attitude, trying to act, like there's something more than just a, a phone covers company it, it, it's like i don't know it really got to me like really and when they first started saying sue us it's like uh, all right mate what what shut up <laughs> just sell your little bits of plastic that you've just nicked the design of from the the playstation i mean we want them but at the same time let's not try and pretend that you're something you're not <laughs> do you know what i mean well, 
they ended their statement by saying, in closing, fuck you and especially fuck Sony. Uh, talk soon. <laughs> what the fuck is the fuck? <laughs> what? what? Okay. Okay. Good luck, D brand. Good luck. Yeah. Um, well, I suppose they're getting the fucking advertising. We've mentioned them enough times on this show. We have, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, this, they'll this be is loving lovely that. for them. Yeah, this is huge for them. Our, our millions of listeners now know who they are. Well done. They've done a good job. Okay. Okay, uh, last story um, is mostly all about Metroid Dread um, because there is a game-closing bug in the game, uh, which is kind of annoying. It's You get an error message, which is the software was closed because an error occurred um, near the end of the game. And uh, do, I mean, do you want me to read the details of this? Or does, does anyone care? What do you think? Yep, tell us well, the details. What's the response? Because it might help other okay. listeners. So Nintendo said, we are aware of an error in the Metroid Dread game that prevents the player from proceeding when the specific sequence below is followed near the end of the game. We are preparing a software update to prevent this error, which should be available in October 2021. Near the end of the game, if the player destroys a door while a map marker for that specific door is displayed on the map, the game will forcibly close and following message will appear. The software was closed because um, an error occurred. We apologise for the inconvenience. So what you can do is if you restart the game and remove the door icon map marker, you can prevent the error anyway. But there is a software update coming uh, at some point soon, uh, by the end of the month apparently. It's just weird. A game with Nintendo on it has, um, you know, it's a, it's one of those things that you don't really see much. Mm-hmm. Game breaking bugs, is it? Um, but okay, they're on it. They're fixing it. It's not a problem, is it? But then also what is maybe more of a problem is that several former Mercury Steam employees have been on the internet to wonder why it is that their names are not on the Metroid Dread credits, um, although they were involved <laughs> yeah, in the production of it. So uh, this is uh, this is from... There was a 3D artist called Roberto uh, Magias, I think it is. He was said, um, I would like to sincerely congratulate the Metroid Dread team for putting out such an outstanding game. I am not surprised at the quality of the game, though since the amount of talent on the team was through the roof. I know this firsthand because despite not being included on the game's credits, I was part of that team for eight months. And uh, then also there was a 3D animator, uh, Tanya uh, Panarandra, uh, who said, uh, she said, I'm very happy and proud to finally be able to see my work um, on the project, a job I did with great love and enthusiasm. I'm also very proud of the whole team. Uh, but she was also uh, not, uh, not, not on there. And then there was also a third employee um, who said, um, it says, uh, not accrediting the work of the team that pulls, uh, puts all the love in the project and the effort is a very ugly practice. And Mercury Steam have responded to this. They said they explained that the company's official policy requires developers to have stayed at the studio for 25% or more of a project's development time in order to appear in the credits. Uh, a bit of a slap in the face, isn't it? It's rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> it's, um, you, you weren't here long enough. Yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, Kotaku also said like this. It's not just Mercury Steam that have done this. I mean, Arcane Studio did the same thing with Deathloop. Apparently, there was people that were relegated to special thanks. You know, even though they were, you know, they'd probably been in, involved in the development. And apparently, over a thousand employees were left off Red Dead Redemption 2's credits as well. Um, God blimey! Yeah, it's, it does happen. Uh, but no, I mean, yeah. it's just you think anybody that's contributed, why not? Why can't you add them? What's the problem there? Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's not like there's a time limit on those things. We've seen some long old credit sequences, mm-hmm. um, and I have to feel bad because when you get to credits, <laughs> the first thing gamers do is go right. How do we skip this? <laughs> do you know what I mean? But you know, there are other there are other reasons why um, names are put on credits. Uh, certainly, as as evidence and proof that you've worked on a project if say you're looking for another job or join a new studio so mm-hmm. yeah and no, i think it is poor form to not credit the people that are working on the game regardless of how little or how much you feel they've done um i think trying to get a handle on how much work they've put into a game is shaky anyway because unless you're in every meeting with them you know mm-hmm. just how do you not how do you make that assessment I don't think time is a factor in that instance. So, yeah, no, it's a bit bit weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's tough. I'd I mean, be pissed if off. Games out for, if games been made for four years and you've had a whole year of your life into it, you're like, but that's not yeah. quite enough. I mean, my name was in the credits for Connectables, and I didn't do anything on that game, so <laughs> I do feel kind of bad about that. But uh, thank you for c- c- yeah, because someone for who works on a game, their name couldn't be in it because your name was in it. Was wasn't that the case? So that's <laughs> well, actually, that's probably for the best, then, isn't it? Oh, yeah, could be, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think the game. It's hard that celebrities get a little bit more. But you were there. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I was there, boy. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> did you know? Did you hear the story about that? So Capone Adam um, put uh, myself and Michael Zibzang and Ratso Albion, I think. Uh, Rat- that's Leon Cox from um, uh, Kane and Rince. Um, <laughs> they said um, uh, apparently the person was coming around and asking who you want as your special thanks for the credits. And Capone said our names. They put it in the game, and then when Capone looked at the credits, it, it said like it was all like thanks, dad, thanks, mum, like thanking their wives, thanking their husbands, you know, all this sort of stuff. And then it got to Capone's, and it was just thanking four podcasters that he listened to. He felt a bit guilty about not putting his family in there, but uh, you know, get a copy of that game, see my name, right? Is that it? That is it. Yeah, I've got nothing else. Cool. Look, before we get on to what we've been playing this week. James, you got a Switch OLED. Can you do a better job of uh, explaining what can. it's like? I mean, I'm struggling to find another word apart from premium um, to describe <laughs> the experience. <laughs> what do you think of the colour, James? Is it? It's a premium colour. Like the colour what? It's a. It's a premium. Listen, I never said that. I mentioned to tell you, I'll ask you this: Have you sold one of your switches? Uh, not yet, but I am intending to. Right. So currently, <laughs> in your house. <laughs> There are more switches than humans. Yes, there are. Yeah, that's true. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> this is mad, James. I know, I know, that's I know. Right, okay. something for guests, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. I could put it in the guest, in the guest room. Yeah. So, yeah, but you were really um, passionate about how you wanted um, to get switches for your family, right? You wanted them to uh, really have an enjoyable experience. Let me ask you, who's using the OLED switch? Who do you think? You, your wife. Yeah, it's yeah, mostly okay. me. Mostly right. me. Yeah. Okay. So mostly me. <laughs> have you let anyone else use it? Yeah, of course I have. Have you? Yeah, Ch- Chen played Tetris. Uh, Tetris Effect. Oh, okay, fine. Asha. Yeah, he's he's touched it a couple of times. Asha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's I did shout at him when cabinet. he did touch it. I mean, the grubby hands and all that kind of stuff. But you know, it was <laughs> right. So, how much did you pay for it? Uh, I paid three hundred and ten pounds. No, three hundred and twelve pounds. I think it was. <laughs> not euros. No, not euros. It, I, hang on, I told you how much it was. Is this a gotcha? Wait, how did somehow? You, how did you order it then? Order it then. I ordered it. It's not gotcha. I ordered it in um, from Amazon, like over here. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. So let's get to this. It arrives. You've spent another three hundred and twelve pounds <laughs> on a console that you've already got. Yeah. Uh, several times over. Mm. You open the box. What What impressed you? What disappointed you? What were, How do you? What's your experience been like? I thought it was pretty snazzy uh, when I opened the box. <laughs> snazzy. Okay. <laughs> Go on. The dock is very nice. It It does feel significantly more uh, luxurious, I think, than the um. Than the the original one, but I mean honestly, I think of another way of saying luxurious. I know. I'm trying to. I, I, it's, I'm well, struggling to word for premium. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go cool. on. Oh, premium, yeah, yeah, premium. It is, it's it's pretty yep. premium, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean the best thing about it, obviously, is the screen, which is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it's very <laughs> of nice. It is. Yeah, it's very okay. very nice. And I mean honestly, though, if you, it's. I'm trying to think how to explain this because I don't regret buying it at all. I think it's very good. But that's I, always a good sign to say that. Yeah. The, moment, <laughs> the first comment about a new console. I, I don't regret buying it. Go on. No, but the thing is, right, is there's two reasons why I bought this. One reason was because I was Promo? interested. There's, yeah, obviously that. <laughs> well, okay, three reasons. One, one reason was that. The second reason was because I was intrigued by the, by the screen because I really enjoyed the, the Vita <laughs> OLED, okay. which He's was intrigued. very good. But no, the the other reason was because the battery on my original Switch is really wrecked like at this point because I've used it so much. I mean, the Switch is pretty much my most used console like of, of all the ones that I've got. And so I was quite looking forward to having something which lasted a bit longer, hopefully. So that's the main reason I bought it. And um, But yeah, but then also I can completely see why it also is pointless in a, in a sense as well. It's, um, Go on, why is that? Well, it's, I mean, the screen is very nice. I mean, the... But you've said that. You've just yeah, yeah. stopped saying the screen is nice because you're getting into premium territory. That's, I mean, that's about it really though, isn't it? There's not really much else you can say <laughs> about it. Like, there really isn't. I mean, I feel for Matt with describing this because there isn't really much you can say apart from the screen's nice. 
It's like there's not really much else that there is to it. It's just it's a very nice console. Like it's a, it is significantly and you're saying better. There's not part of you just thinking, why have I done this? Not at all. Not at all. Because also Asher is now delighted that he's got the old one. Because he can, you know, he plays it on oh, TV. The, one with, the, battery battery. the one, with, one with the Rex battery, yeah. But he, he's <laughs> sitting he, right next to a mains outlet. Dave, Dave, he, that... he, he, he won't notice. He won't notice. It's right. <laughs> I'm trying to do the tutorial in this game, but it keeps powering down. <laughs> also, I mean, he, he also scratched that that screen, which so he, he's getting it back now. It's um, you know, it's it's a bit annoying. <laughs> James Farley. <Yeah. laughs> so what? So. He's enjoying that one. Yeah. So you're selling the light. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to sell a light. But then the thing is, is that, you see, Chen's one is like, she doesn't like it that much anyway because she never liked the colour. And so I was thinking of giving her Asher's old one instead because it's it, he's got the There's yellow one. There's some mad trading wow, game. Right, so what colour is Asher's? <laughs> he's got the yellow what? one. Musical which, switches. What, what, what colour is um, Chen's? She had the, like, the black, like dark grey like one. Which um, yeah, okay. But that you see, that's How the one. How much selling them for? I don't know because that you see, the Chen's one is the one which is in the best condition. Like, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Whereas Asher's one okay. is a bit grubby and like you know, I don't. Um, this is why I was like, Chen, do you want his? And she's like, I don't know actually because it looks horrible. Like it's 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 in a bit of a state. So I don't know. I'm not sure what to do at this stage. I'm confused. We'll see. You're gonna end up with loads of them, aren't you? It's <laughs> it's not gonna stop. At I mean, some point, Ash is going to ask for the OLED model for his birthday or something. You're going to end up getting one of them. You'll have two OLEDs, three lights, and I a mean, normal Dave, one. Actually, <laughs> it's actually worse than this because you don't know about another one I've got, I think. No. No. <laughs> okay. What? I've also got a broken switch light um, somewhere as well. Why? Rachel broke one. And uh, yeah, we ended up having to buy a new one uh, for her. How did that break? How did I break it? Uh, she broke the, uh, what's it called, the control stick. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the Switch is launched, and you, a family of four, We've have six. purchased six <laughs> Nintendo Switches. Yeah, done, yeah, six. Time, it's insane. I know it's mad. I know it doesn't make any sense, but we've also had a lot of enjoyment out of those machines. They've been great. You yeah. keep saying that, but... Six Nintendo Switches. Yeah. See, the thing is, is have like, you to- have you totted up how much it's all cost? No, of course Just not. I'm not going to do that. It's it's horrible. It's horrible. Thought. I, I mean, it's you're at least, looking at like at least it's it's over a grand, isn't it? for just two yeah. of them. Oh, easily. Yeah. So, so they say the lights were two hundred, but the lights two hundred. No, less than two hundred. About one hundred seventy. No, they're not. They are. They're not like hundred. Okay, one hundred eighty. I think it was one hundred eighty. There's no more than that. Definitely. Right, so that's so right. Let's work that out then. So it's three sixty for two, yeah. so which is which three sixty for two, which is seven twenty for four. Mm. Plus, you've spent over well, probably about six hundred and fifty pounds on the other two. So that's now we're looking at yeah, one thousand one thousand four hundred. Is it it's money is well spent? Correct, money well spent. Like over over the last five years or whatever. It's, uh, it's okay. Yeah. But you see, the thing is, is you see, I looked into getting Rachel's repaired, but it was seriously like costs more than what well, as much as buying a new one. So I just thought, well, we'll have to Did get a it? new one. How much is it? What do you mean? What's well, repair? Yeah, it was about one hundred and eighty quid. Seriously, it's insane. If you go on Nintendo's okay. website and have a look at how much they charge for repairs, it's it's crazy. Like the amount the amount okay, they cost. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so sure. it's it's currently in a drawer somewhere now. It's uh, yeah. It's, <laughs> What about the other one you're not using? That's just in a drawer as well. That's, that's on the sofa. It's on the sofa at the moment. Actually, I can see it from here. It's uh, yeah. You know, you know, Matt. He's you know he's got others as well. Yeah, right? that's yeah, it. He's, there's no way he's going to tell us the full truth again. It is like FIFA. If you if you didn't listen back then, <laughs> James, one year when the FIFA, FIFA first launched on the Switch, he bought it on the Switch, sold it, then bought it on the PlayStation, sold that, got it back on the Switch, sold that, got it back on the PlayStation. That I think we worked out you'd bought it over ten times. No, this it wasn't that many. It was, like, it, was about five, it was about five or six times. It wasn't ten. It no, was it was only more than five that. or six. It, it was, was ridiculous. I know it was it was ridiculous, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, all right. Uh, should we get on to the games then? So, Metro Dread. Mm-hmm. You you were very excited about this game. 
uh, before it came out? Has it lived up to your expectations? Well, this is the thing because I I actually wasn't like massively excited by it because I was scared. Um, Did you as, were? No, no, I was I was worried oh, that right, it, you had that fear that it was yeah, going to be rubbish. That it was okay, going to be yeah, rubbish. Sure. Yeah, I, I was really yeah, but bothered. that's standard James Farley though, isn't it? Yeah, I know, but it's not without precedent because the what's it called the. Return of Samus that they did was was okay from what I've heard. It wasn't like amazing or anything, and I just I didn't know if it was going to be any good or not. And um, but then it turns out that it's probably the best game I've played on Switch this year. I think it's absolutely fantastic, and I really love it like a lot. I mean, I'm right at the end of the game now. I'm I'm on the final boss, and it's. I mean, I'm I'm still not entirely convinced on the on the controls um, because. With all the other, oh dear, you slaughtered Matt for that. Go on. Well, no, because the the problem is is that they've moved it so that it's entirely like their analog controls. Like the whole thing is is on on the analog stick, and although that does add like a feeling of sort of fluidity to like your movement, it also means that you don't get such precise movement, which you kind of need later on, particularly when you're doing like running like uh, running attacks and stuff like that. It's much easier to do that with a with a D pad than it is with an and with an analog stick. So that's something that I'm still not entirely happy about. Um, but I'm just really shocked at how well this has managed. To, like Mercury Steam, you know, the developer has like replicated the exploration of Super Metroid, like the the style of that, because it's just so good. It's so incredibly good. I mean, Matt, you did. I think you did a great job of like describing why this is brilliant. And I just I think it's a very good game. It's yeah, it's excellent. Just going back to the controls, just before we go into it properly. Um, one of my criticisms last week was about the fact that sometimes it feels a bit fiddly if you're in the heat of battle, mm-hmm. switching between like holding down R and L and pressing Y. Do you find that, or is that just me being rubbish? It, no, I do find that a little bit, especially with especially towards the end where you have to use all of those abilities, like pretty much to get through different bosses. And it's like especially like doing things like having to slide under stuff, and then also you know like use different combinations of the of like the shoulder buttons as well. It's it does get a little bit overly complicated. I think. I mean, I just find myself holding down the R R, R button all the time now because you know to do like lock on uh, for like multiple missiles and everything. And yeah. that is that is a bit much, I think. And this is one of the only other slight things that I, f- I found annoying actually with and again with the movement is that I've got to the stage where I've been going back and I've been like picking up um, items around the map and some of them obviously that it's designed so that you have to use like various sort of skills that you learn throughout the game to be able to like get things like energy tanks and like missiles and stuff like that but the problem is is that because the controls to me don't feel quite precise enough it can be quite irritating uh, trying to get some of those and it's and I know that that's pro- that's probably just me being rubbish um, at the game, but I found it more irritating than I have than I did in like for example Super Metroid or Fusion um, because like especially some of the like Shine Spark stuff where you have to like get it like a really like fast run up, then you have to like press down so that you can like store the energy and it's I just can never like exactly get it right and some of the areas where you have to like do a run up, it's so incredibly tight like the amount of space that you have to do it in that it's just it's quite annoying. Uh, I I found and it's I've kind of at the moment I've given up on trying to get 100% because I think it will just drive me mental like trying to do that it'll just drive me crazy and yeah I'm I'm not going to do it and I mean the only yeah other... I I, I, uh, I spent about an hour uh, uh this evening trying to get one of them what well, trying to get one of the things using the spark does it shine sparks yeah where mm-hmm. you kind of chain you, you you basically like run you click in sticks you kind of save some energy you press down and then you know you can you can use that energy elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I spent ages trying to find it. I did eventually do it because now I think I'm more determined than ever to get 100%. But mm-hmm. yeah, they're really, really tricky. And it's 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 one of those things where it was like I was doing that and then I was just thinking, actually, I'm not enjoying this. Like, you know, sometimes when there's a challenge in a game and you just think, yeah, I really want to do this and I want to beat it and I feel it's it's doable. With this, I just didn't feel I was really enjoying it. So I just thought, oh, I'm not going to do this. It's it, I'm I'm not going to bother like trying to. The only other downside I feel about the game is the music because I don't like one of the best things about Super Metroid was the soundtrack. Like it was absolutely fantastic. But this, I don't feel this is at all memorable. I can't even remember any of the, the, the soundtrack from it at all, really, and which is a bit of a shame. But apart from that, I mean, the animation and the characterization of Samus is like one of the best. Like, And it's probably one of the best that like, I've seen like for for 
how rarely she's like you actually see her in the game and for how rarely you actually see her sort of interacting with other characters the way it's done is so good and like just so again that that is memorable it's um there's there's a part you know like one of the very early bosses you know where she just sort of casually like shoots him like in the face and it's just the way it's done is just so it's so like it sort of speaks to the like the history of the character and all the things that have happened before and you know the the relationship that she's had with this um this enemy like over the years and it's it's so so good like, i absolutely love it i thought it was that was another fantastic aspect but it's really yeah, just she's it. an absolute badass in this mm-hmm. like it, 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 and you don't see her face that often but when you do it's like, it feels like it means a lot it's really yeah. cool and it's just, I mean, the exploration is just so good. And especially towards the end of the game where, like, after you've obviously, like, really powered yourself up again, the, the, this sort of sense of empowerment is so well realized in this because, like, you know, all the obstacles that you thought were very difficult or hard to sort of get through, you know, earlier on, it just becomes a breeze. And then it's just, but then you start to get cocky and then you get to, like, the bosses and you're like, actually, no, I still need to, like, I'm, I'm having, I'm going to have to learn, like, the last boss before I can do it properly because I can only get through, I can get to the second stage of it, but I can't, I still can't beat it at this stage. And I, I know that I just need to sit down and spend some time learning it. It feels, I mean, I've been playing Dark Souls 2 recently and it feels like that, you know, this idea of that you you just need to put the time in and then you can do it i mean this is certainly one of the hardest uh, nintendo games that i've played for a very very long time it's it it's really quite difficult i think in places especially some of the bosses but still in a generally fair way it's um yeah i still think it's 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 very good Mm. yeah Yeah. see because after after matt was talking about last week i was like i might actually buy the buy this but then i saw so many comments about how hard it was and i just thought i'm not I need to be in a mood for something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's getting around the map is not really terribly difficult, but when you come up against like some of the enemies, you do have to sort of put the time in, you know, to sort of learn it really, because otherwise, it's it's you can't just sort of like um, you know sort of spam your way through stuff. It, you have to really concentrate and learn patterns and stuff like that. I mean, the, it does have the fact that you can go around and try and find like energy cells and things like that, so that you've got you know sort of more energy like to take on uh, different boss encounters, but. That also requires, you know, time, and it's, yeah, I, I, you're right, Dave, you have to be in the right mood for this, and if you are not wanting to, you know, put in a lot of effort, you know, to sort of have to, like, learn how things work, then I, I wouldn't bother at the moment. Well, I think it's because, and I'll get to it later, but I think it's mainly because I'm playing Deathloop, and Deathloop feels like I've really got to take my time with it mm-hmm. and focus down and I'm finding myself only playing death loops in in short bursts really because of the intensity of just moving about you know um it gets to a point where I'm like okay I just want to I just chill I'll play something a little bit more chill for a bit um so to then go to some hardcore thing like that mm-hmm. it's uh yeah I know, maybe maybe I'll get to it but I I can't see myself playing it uh, over the next month or so I mean, I think it's just really, it's really kind of cool, really, that like Nintendo have released a game like this, though. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, because yeah. it's quite. This doesn't happen very often these days. Like a lot of their games, I'm not saying like their games are absolutely not dumbed down. Like you've got you know stuff like um, you know Mario 3D World and things like that. They are difficult games. Like when you start to get to the end game for those, they're hard. You know, a lot of those. But this is one which feels. A lot, like just throughout, like they, the, you know, the barrier to entry is quite high for a Nintendo game, I would say, and it's it's nice to see them still releasing stuff like this. It's yeah, very good. I just I really wish that they would re-release those others um, as well um, on the Switch because I'd love to play through, especially like Fusion and um, and like the uh, what's called um, Samus Returns. I'd love to play those again, uh, or at least the yeah, Return of Samus. Um, so James, Matt, uh, it's obviously been a while since you played them, but mm-hmm. what? Um, changes or improvements did this one make that you feel like the older ones wouldn't feel as good or actually have they not made too many drastic changes that it just feels good because it's Metroid that that's the thing because it doesn't it this does just feel like Metroid and that's why this feels so good the only the biggest change I would say is the control and the fact that they've moved it over to the analog controls um, because that's about it really and that's why this feels so good to play it's um yeah it's it's Metroid and it's hardcore Metroid as well, which is great. Um, last week when I talked about it, I said I'm very I'm quite near the end. I, I was uh, I was so wrong, um, or maybe I'm near the end. But I, I've I've been struggling more and more on the bosses. I mean, whereas bosses would take me 
I don't know, five to 10 attempts to learn it and get it through. I was, I was spending like half an hour on that. I, mean, I spent one boss, I think it was called SQ. I was, I was, I was basically playing for the whole of that England match the other night. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I kept on it and uh, and I got it done because I, I think I find with most of these bosses, the first time you play it, like, okay, I've got no chance. How can I even stay alive, let alone do any damage? And then, yeah, you have a few goes and suddenly, actually, no, I can do phase one without getting touched. I can do phase two without getting touched. And then it's about keeping it and keeping it together and, and putting it all together in phase in phase three to kill the boss but yeah the bosses i have been taking me gradually longer and longer and then the kind of the mini bosses within the map they've been taking me longer and longer whereas earlier in the game you would come up to one of these um was it like these chozo ninja uh, robot yeah, warriors, things yeah. and something yeah, and suddenly you've got two of them in, in one area where you got like you know stay alive and deal damage and yeah, I, f- I, f- I find it really tough, but also really rewarding. I mean, um, definitely one where I think I was text. I think I told you, James. I was spending like an hour or something on one boss, and I was like, I'm just struggling so much. I went to bed. Next day, okay, I did, and I'm like, second or third go, which is it's really really satisfying to do. And yeah, I f- I think this game doesn't start out hard, but it's definitely now getting harder. I mean, I'm also now at the final boss, um, but I uh, I thought. Oh, don't think I've got like enough energy tanks and missiles, so I'll, I'll go through and collect some. But now, having spent a fair amount of time um, doing these quite tricky sh- uh, shine spark maneuvers, where they're, they're basically mini puzzles, you've got to try and work out, you know, where do you run, where do you, hide, where do you, you know, which platform do you get to to keep your energy up to enable you to do a, a you know, a, a jump or a, a smash through some blocks towards the end. They're all kind of mini puzzles. I've done enough of them now to think. Okay, I'm just gonna hundred percent. I'm just gonna get every of it, every every possible kind of tank and or missile, and then go to the final boss. Mm-hmm. I think I've got three uh, areas so far hundred percented, so I'm working my way back up towards the final boss. And um, but earlier in the earlier in the week, I was like, well, I can get to the boss, and you know, often for this podcast, I would try and like get through a game as quick as possible, really, so I can try and talk about it on the show and talk about it at the same time everyone else talks about it particularly like in launch week but this game is feels different because actually i don't want to rush for it i want to savor it and i really have enjoyed you know almost every moment there's been some frustrating bits but yeah i i i love it more than i did last week really um mm-hmm. it's just so i mean the, the, the level design is fantastic i love i love the enemies i love how it feels to play yes it's definitely frustrating at points with just tough bosses and also tough a tough sort of moments you have to chain these abilities together to if you really want 100 percent it um mm-hmm. but no i think it's i think it's absolutely fantastic and yeah i think i've done enough now i'm just gonna stick with it and try and 100 percent it and then go to the final boss with everything uh behind me but no i've been playing it loads this week and uh whereas i thought i was near the end last week that was not the case i mean yeah. what, what i do find amazing um i mean i am i've taken way 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 longer than most people would be to play it, and i've done those exploring now and now going towards 100 percent. but having said that um, i've seen some people whose game clocks they've like they've got 100 percent of items after like and they finished the game in like six and a bit hours that's that's crazy i mean it's... which is wild i mean i, I checked um because you don't actually see your game clock unless you close the game and then kind of load your save yeah and i'll and um i checked today <laughs> mine is 17 hours seven i'm at see, i'm at 11 and i thought that was a lot that's yeah that's that's well, a yeah, lot 17 hours. hours and i'm i mean i've probably got like a, i mean probably like at least another five hours if i'm gonna like struggle on some of these tricky uh tricky tanks i'm trying to get but no um yeah so i've certainly been taking my time shall we say worth it though cool really good is that Hell it yeah. for metroid yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm looking forward to hearing what Sean's got to say about it as well because I mean, yeah, I he's yeah, been playing absolutely. it. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, Sean Sean's been pretty um excited to talk about it. So, uh we'll move on because we'll be talking about it again next week. I, I mean, will <sighs> say at this point though, um Matt Palace are playing again on the time we're recording and yet again they've conceded a last minute goal. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? You're a curse. <laughs> yeah, I know it's bad. Have you had it on? Yeah. Oh, Matt. <laughs> Oh, man. It's such a sh- Do you mute your mic when, like, the last few moments or something? I mute my mic most of the time, but particularly if Palace are playing, because uh, let's just move on. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I mean, no, look, it could be worse. We lost 2 0 to Luton at the weekend. It's ridiculous, but yeah, I can't. Anyway. Uh, I, 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 out of all the things I've brought up on the show, this one is the one that sounds like it hurts the most. <laughs> 
It's not you. It's um. Let's just move on. So sorry, James. Were you about to say something? <laughs> I heard you make a noise before David carried on. No, it's, I, I was just going to say I'm just really delighted that this turned out to be really good, and because I just wasn't expecting it to be, and it's just a really nice surprise. Good. There you go. Cool. Um, you got nothing else, Matt, to talk about? No, it's just that. It's oh, me. one only one okay. other thing I played, which was Tetris Effect. Um, yeah, thanks to the code from CJ, which was yeah, which we we all used, I think, and it's a good game. Yeah, I'm still playing it. I played it just before we started recording. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah, doing the whole uh, sprint stuff again, trying to get under one minute thirty. I tell you what, it looks really very hard. nice on the OLED screen, Dave. It looks very good. Does on it? There. Yeah. yeah. It looks yeah. very as I premium. As, I was such a dick when um, uh, we were talking about Tetris Effect. Uh, Sean said, "Oh, imagine how good that'll look on an OLED screen." And I said, "Well, yeah, but imagine how look good it looks on a, a 50 inch <laughs> CD, <laughs> fucking 4K." Um, but yeah, no, it was a dickish thing to say. Uh, I, I, I know what you mean. I'm it looks great it on is OLED TV as well. To be such fair. a contrast. Mm. Yes, and it, yeah, cause such a contrast and everything. Um, it, it, yeah, I could see why that would look so good. Uh, and I've been, it's the pick up a play thing, isn't it? Just s- sitting on that switch for a little bit and playing a bit of Tetris. Yeah. I think it's one of it's the best part versions of, of thinking, Tetris. It's, it's really good. I still, did I prefer Tetris 99? I think I did. I, I, I There was just something about the excitement of that. However, just kicking back and doing a few um, yeah, areas in, in Tetris effects is pretty amazing. It is a good game. I think I undersold it when I first played it. I think I was just disappointed with a lot of the music, but I guess it seems less of an issue the more I play it, you know? Uh, it's one of those things. Um, okay, I will... I'll briefly mention... Obviously, right, I've been playing three... Uh, games mainly this uh, this week. Tetris Effect was one of them. Have you tried the multiplayer in that, James? Uh, yeah, I played one game and I won, and it's I thought weird, I'm done it? now because that's uh, I'm yeah. happy with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was the same. Um, I played with John, and it just felt a bit weird. We were like, I kind of get what it's doing, but at the same time, I'm just finding this irritating. Um, so that was about it from us, but um, because that's the one where you you you're playing your own game of Tetris, and then all the Tetris games sort of come together as one, and then you can go onto other people's boards and help them out, or sometimes that hinders them, and yeah, it's just a bit weird. I I, I don't know. I'd rather just play. Can you play one versus one? Yeah, on there? I think you can. Yeah, like against each other. I'm pretty certain you can. We should try it. Um, I'm not, yeah, yeah, we'll try that. Mm-hmm. We'll try that. I, I, I've got I've got a question for you, James. Cool. So, I bought FIFA. We got FIFA. Have you even played that this year? Uh, I have. I've only, I've played it very little because when it came out, that's when we went away, and so I didn't really get the chance oh, to play right. so much. But then also, I don't like it very much um, from what I've played so Why far. That? I mean, I've been playing it in in career modes, and it just. I'm finding it really hard to score, like all the time. I don't know why. Ah, oh, the keepers are crazy in it. Like they've totally overdone it. I, I mean, they needed to do something because we were playing games on the last year's one, and it was like finishing like seven five or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was yeah, it was getting a bit ridiculous. But now they're pulling off the most insane saves that I've ever seen in a video game. Like it's it's utterly nuts. I mean, um, the other thing I need to do is I need to reset my Xbox. You know, do that hard reset thing as well because it's still doing that stuttering thing that it was doing as well where the performance oh, really? is really poor and so yeah it's not not very good so yeah that's a bit bizarre mm. a little bit disheartening as well mm-hmm. considering but um yeah no that all i've got to say about that is that you know we're still playing pro clubs they've they fuck pro clubs up a lot you know the amount of how often you get skill points is ridiculous now you've got to play it so many times to boost your player up they addressed that this week by saying look okay you we're adding a bunch of bonus points as as you level up but they haven't backdated it so they've said like when you get to level 10 you'll get 10 uh, skill points but the problem is i'm past level 10 i booted it up and it didn't give me the points that i would have got so, uh, you know, we're always going to be... It feels like we're always going to be under static compared to who we're playing with. But the the biggest sin is fucking seasons mode, man. Because when online... when If you don't play FIFA, there's a mode in it called seasons. And what it is, you pick a team out of any of the teams in the game. And you go online, you face off against someone else. And if you... like, you, They come in blocks of 10 games. 
So you get three points for a win, one point for a draw, uh, none for losing, just like in a normal league match. And it accumulates those amount of points and there are several targets. So if you, you know, get eight points out of the 10 games, then you get promoted. If you get 10 points, then you get like a, a trophy or whatever to your yeah, name. You go as champions, um, don't you? Yeah. And then you, you progress your way up from division 10, uh, nine, eight, seven, all the way up to division one where in theory, all the best players should be right. And, and it gets harder as you go up the leagues and stuff. You could get relegated as well if you don't earn enough points, but back in the day, you could, I, I used to play as Millwall and it used to find teams with the same star levels and you face off against each other. So I was playing and it was like, Oh, you, uh, you're against Arsenal. Now you're against uh, Man United. Now you're against PSG. And I'm just going, this is ridiculous. Like, I can't play Millwall versus PSG. You go 4-0 down in the first 20 minutes because, you know, I'm, I've got Matt Smith and they've got Messi and, and Beppe and set players like that, right? It's, it's not going to work out. But, but then I went into settings and you can moderate it. So it says, oh, you could reduce it down to just teams with the same amount of um, uh, stats as you, like the, the same rated teams or whatever. You select that. And it says, are you sure? Might be hard to get a game. And I'm like, fine, I will take not being able to get a game 10 times in a row before getting one uh, rather than playing PSG every time I play. So I, I clicked yes. I launched it, found one pretty quickly, and I was playing against Man United again. And I was like, what's the fucking point? This game never used to do this. So that's a whole game mode completely ruined for me. So I was a bit pissed off by that. Um, uh, but I'm still playing FIFA because I'm an idiot. And last night we had one of those sessions where we won every game. So all of a sudden now we think we're good and, and that FIFA's changed and it's great now when clearly it's just the algorithms kicking in going, give them a few wins, will you? Uh, so that, that's FIFA. But the main game I've been playing is Deathloop. And I just kind of want to get a feel with how I'm doing because I find this really hard to judge whether I'm doing okay in it or not, right? So I did my first proper run after the tutorial and I'm taking the tutorial up till when you get the ability to get a uh, residium right yeah to definitely. upgrade it's your a kit. long long old tutorial but it uh, there's a so lot to go through yeah so in that first you get there's four parts of the day in that first day I'd killed a visionary in three of them and in the other one I just went on a bit of a residium hunt to um uh to make sure that I had the slabs for the next day that's not bad, right? Is that that's a good run? That's a very really good. Felt. That's a lot better than I was doing. I wasn't really even going towards the visionaries. I was more interested in like getting the clues and so on and so forth. Yeah, so. but I'm finding that the clues you have to go to where the visionaries are anyway. Yeah, yeah you absolutely do. Yeah, you do. But I, I wasn't so, really like focused on the king then. I was just so when you're there, you might as well kill him. I don't. I don't want to die. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> so I got I got three. Uh, I got two slabs, and then I um. I used Residium on one of their weapons because it was a pretty cool weapon. And then last night was the first time where I was like, oh, fuck this. Because uh, I went for another visionary first thing in the morning. And it was the one that's in the nightclub where it takes your abilities away before you go in. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And I cleared the whole club out. I finally got up to him. And because it takes your abilities away, you can't regen. So I hadn't died the whole time. So usually you've got free resurrections, but because I didn't have that, I got absolutely flooded with enemies out of nowhere and they killed me. And I was like, oh man, now I've got to go back and do that all again. And that was the first time I was like, oh, that, that's actually shit. The mechanics now is actually pissed me off a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that was a bit shit. And also I've got another question. So uh, this won't be a spoiler. I'm guessing it's a spoiler. So one of the visionaries is a scientist, right? And you learn that you have to wreck their experiment to make sure they're in a certain place. Yeah. You know that one? Yeah. Yep. Now, you do that in the morning. If you wreck it once, do you have to do that every time you do a run? No. So you wreck it once and well, that stays wrecked for the rest of the game? No, it depends on which one you're talking about. Some, some scientists. Things- well, no, because there's there's other scientists as well. It's there's there's it depends. Uh, how do I put it? the invisible control panel? Oh no, no, you know you have to do that every time, which is oh really? Yeah, which is but then obviously I don't. I can just save that 
to the end, right? I yes. know how to do that now, so I can just yes. save that. Right. It's like yeah, okay. the the final run is like some things you still have to like make happen, um, so that then you get like the best outcome, uh, you know, for the for the for the ending, as it were. How would I know? Like, so um, it feels like the structure of the game is you've got to keep kill each visionary once, and then you do the perfect run. Is that kind of how it works? Kind of, yeah. But then it's it's not not really no because some of them you ha- you have to do multiple times because the game is a lot more linear than you think it is. In that you you have to you basically have to accomplish certain goals so that then you get a chance to do the ending anyway. Right. And does it tell you when you're ready to do the ending? Yeah, it's yeah. very clear. It's, yeah, it's but... clear. Okay, okay, yeah. that's cool. Okay, okay, this, all right, that's fine. This was the thing which surprised me the most about the game because the pre like the marketing and everything for it made me feel that this was like a really open world like kind of thing, but it's really Same not. Here, yeah. It's not though at all. Yeah. It's it's a lot more linear than than yeah. No, it, it seems to be it seems to be saying to me constantly, go here, go here yeah. now, go here. You know what I mean? So if I'm just following that path, then that's cool. Mm-hmm. At least I know there's a structure to it. And instead of going to do something else, I'm gonna go and try yeah, and take I really, out that I really appreciate that actually I really yeah, liked it for that yeah so do I I was, I, I was I, pleased I, you know I like time loop games um, I do like time loop games but there is that sort of feeling you have in the back of your mind is like have I missed an opportunity is that like I was really happy that when I was in a certain area in the morning it wasn't going quick you better get here and do this because time's running out like it, it, it doesn't do that at all really does it Certainly doesn't feel like it does. No, no, I don't think it does. Um, there are like there are certain things at certain times where you would you, it's probably advisable to get to certain places so you don't miss certain things. Uh, but no, it's not. Well, that's the what? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking towards the end. As I, but at this point, it's just like so, you know. At this point, pre-end game, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, um, but other than that, I, like I'm really enjoying the sort of back and forth between Colt and everyone, and I think it's such a great character, and the mystery of what happened pre you playing the game is is really fascinating. I'm I'm really enjoying that. I'm picking up little bits and pieces here and there of Colt pre pre when you start controlling him, and it's uh, it's funny. You're starting to realise that actually you're the sort of meathead idiot that everyone looks down on during you know beforehand uh and it's quite funny realizing how people saw you before you become aware of who you are again if you know what i mean like learning from your past and realizing Mm -hmm. that actually you were treated like shit (laughs) no one actually really liked you uh although that although you know that's how it feels at the moment so yeah really enjoying it it's um I want to play more of it. It feels like I want to do like a big like three four hour session on it, but at the same time, I'm finding it so intense, like moving about that um yeah I'm I'm sort of I'm that's that's holding me off from actually sitting down and playing it for a long time. Yeah, I, uh, I liked it, but then when I had my first kind of three four or five hour session, whatever it was, that's when okay, that's when I really properly got into a groove and yeah, it changed how I felt about the game actually. Yeah, I'm finding it. I'm finding it um, quite uh, satisfying just running around killing people. Um, but at the same time, I'm also at areas now where I can get flooded, and I'm like, ah, oh, shit, this is actually quite difficult. You die pretty quickly. Um, so I'm interested to see if there are mitigating factors to that. Like, I've not found any upgrades to my health. Maybe that comes into it at some point, but mm-hmm. uh, we'll see. I still need we to finish it. I, I. Because we went, really? up, yeah, we. Cause the, I got right to the end, but then we went away, and I, I haven't gone back to it yet because I've been playing Metroid Dread, and it's, it's one of those things where I'm a bit worried to go back to it now because I'm worried my skills are not going to be good enough to, do, to do the final bit because I was stuck on it, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit annoying. Okay, um, so there's that, and the, the last game that I played this week, and you actually, we, we, we should talk about you, Matt, because you played Mass Effect. You have returned to streaming this week. <laughs> I did, yeah. I got one complaint. Go on. I got one little complaint. Can we talk about the complaint? You know yeah. what it is. About the beard thing. Well, like, I mean, all week we're going to make a character like you, and then you didn't. Yeah, I forgot about what? that. But I think what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to uh, just play through to that bit um, with a customised version in, you didn't, on Sunday. I have, I can never, you, didn't, never say. you didn't forget about it, did you? Uh, well, I, on the stream, I was like, I'll just, I'll just be bog did standard. You? I assume you did that for a cheap gag about where you replaced your eyes and mouth with shepherds. No, 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 not at all. I just, I just thought I'd just go bog standard. Um, no, I totally forgot about what? the whole making it Why? look like me. I don't know. I just, thought I, I just thought I'd, I'd just stick with. Bog, I called him Matt and stick with bog standard shepherd because that's what he looks like and go on from there. But but when we were talking about, about the stream, beard, like so. for the two weeks leading up to the stream, we said make sure you auto level up because no one wants oh, I forgot, to see. You I forgot everything up about that. that. That thankfully really? James rang me. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. Did good good catch there, James. <laughs> Give him a call. And just go, no, mate. No, and I still saw people in the chat going, "No, you should level up all your no, characters." Do no, yeah. absolutely not. There's no need for it in that game. Just sit there and enjoy the story. So, how did how did you find going back to the first one? It's good. I mean, I I don't remember any of that really. Um, so I wonder how far I I remember getting to the Mako. Is is that how you pronounce it? Mako. Mako. Okay. Because uh, it sounds too much like Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, uh, Mako. Yeah, I remember getting to that bit, so I don't even know how far that is. But no, it was good. I, I enjoyed um, I enjoyed the stream. It, I mean, I'm, I'm intrigued by the story. Uh, combat seems okay, even though it's like obviously an, an old game. Um, no, we'll, we'll see where it goes. But yeah, I'm probably going to... I can't wait to see a character. Because the cool thing about making a Mass Effect character is that you could try for ages to try and make him look like you, but they'll always be a little bit off. Like, for example, mine just looked like Steve Buscemi, right? And now oh, like people that it. know what I look like know that if you, you know, really try, you can see that I look a bit like Steve Buscemi, but not as much as this character did. I think it's the eyes. <laughs> a little bit bulbous. It's always so the eyes. I think, yeah, yeah. So it looked like Steve Buscemi walking about the <laughs> various different romancing Amanda and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's just if a only, fucking mess. If only you could have done the voice as well. That would have been absolutely superb. <laughs> yeah, I can't do his voice. Mm. <laughs> He's, I love that. I love that. Yeah, so I will make a custom character and then play up to that bit. I stopped playing around two hours in, and so we'll have a different save on Sunday. Cool. We're All right. Beard, okay. <laughs> Matt, come on. you got to listen to your mates. got to listen to your mates yeah, more. I, this that what... happened. I've slept since then. That was a long time ago. Okay, but also about the Mario Party stuff. Listen to your mates more. That's that's my advice to you there. Listen to your mates. They care for you. They're I'm giving my, you a little man. bit of advice. Okay. Um, and yeah, and I've been playing Lake. Uh, and I think I'm getting towards the end of it. I don't know, Matt. What, what, know, what day mate. are you on? I don't know. I think I've just... The, the Frank has been uh, sacked. Oh yeah. So that's got to be no, near no, the do, end. Do I you think. know what day of the week you're on? Uh, Wednesday, maybe. I oh, think. Of week one or week two? We must be week two now. It must be week two. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's week two. Okay. I've had. I the last thing I did, I think, was go to the campsite and um, have have a doobie and a oh, beer. Right, yeah, with... yeah. I, I said no to a doob. Um Why? Because I, I, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel right for my character. I didn't want to have a dupe. Uh, I think oh, I said yes to a beer, but I wasn't going to smoke with the two people that might be on the run. <laughs> it might be. They were like, oh, you can have our, our uh, yeah, RV. Thing. I was like, I don't want the RV. Uh, but, but what did you do yeah. with the RV, though? I said I didn't want it either. I, like, I don't want that thing. I don't, I'm not staying there. I know that's where it's leading to. I'm not staying there. Yeah, no, but no. What, but why would... how, have you Go played on. anything after that yet? No. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. Something is going to happen then. Is something finally going to happen? Like, I like the game? way Matt, you're sort of foreshadowing that something amazing is is just about to like happen. I'm, I'm looking no, forward to this. No, I wasn't doing that at all. It was just something That's with kind the of what RV. You I wanted to know what you did after that, but we'll find out next time, maybe. Uh, okay. Yeah, I well, I know you're it. not a fan, but I I really liked that game for what it was. It was just like a nice little detail. What, what did you like? I can find out exactly where I was. Hold on. Um, I just I liked the very kind of you know, I, I like I like the feeling of it. It felt like a Sunday movie. It it's kind of oh, like a oh, slice of I'm middle America. Thurs- life. I'm on Thursday, Matt. I'm on Thursday. Okay, cool. Thursday. Of Am I getting week two. right near the end then? Uh, yeah, because like the end of the week is Friday, so you 
you uh oh right okay yeah yeah i've been doing it in two day chunks so yeah the, the next one should be my last one then no no oh, have, have, has anyone invited you to something on the weekend yet no you must you must have a you don't you must you know have like an engagement on oh, the weekend. oh, oh yeah yeah but your old friend invites you to go up a tree um that was no, at the weekend no i was thinking about like a a talent show thing Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been invited. Yeah, open mic totally night, not talent show. I, I'm, I'm totally going to the open mic night. Yeah, that's that's happening. Yeah. That's happening. Oh, just a ter- terrible game. Right, okay, that's not what a terrible we've game. Been <laughs> that's what we've been playing this week. Um, should we get to the questions? Yes. Oh, is that me? Good. <laughs> get to the questions then, Matt. Um, Re- read the room. Read the room. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I, d- I totally forgot, but it's normally Sean that does that, doesn't it? It's, okay, it's it me. does, but it says on the go- Google Doc here, questions yeah, and in thought, brackets, oh, brilliant. James is back. James can do it all. No, it's not the case, is it? Um, yeah, if you want to leave us a question, go to dear, go to tcs.co. Okay, let's start again. If you want to leave us a question. <laughs> you right, Matt? I just, I just, I was just, I, thinking, I, was I can just get relaxed at this point. I don't have to think about it, no. Um, if you want to leave us a question, go to tcgs.co slash dear tcgs Maria Mendieta is first up dear tcgs coaxial cable James Farley is highlighting this are you about to delete it James? <laughs> I thought I was just trying to rattle you a bit more Matt I was, I was okay. <laughs> hearing your blue yeti adverts has been a treat over the past few weeks the spirit and production value that went into each one made me nostalgic for the old console adverts of the 90s did any of those gaming adverts succeed in getting you to purchase a game or console i.e. the haircut-themed Mega Drive commercial from 1994. Keep up the incredible work. Sincerely, question. I think there must have been the Pokemans advert that that must have... Because why did I buy that game? I've got no... I I don't even know where I would have heard of it. Because none of my mates played it. So I guess I must have seen an advert for that. And the other one was clearly the... Mortal Kombat! That, that, that was a great episode. That one definitely got me playing Mortal Kombat, 100%. That was a good one. The the Amiga James, one James made Cole. me want, want an Amiga, actually. Really? Yeah. What was the Amiga one? The Sunshine on a Rainy Day one. That, that yeah, I love that episode. I don't remember this. It, you have, you're probably, you're probably too, too young. It's, uh, yeah, but it was... I'm uh, definitely too young. Yeah. Well, but, hold on. So it was a picture of an Amiga with sunshine on no, no, it was a rainy day. No, no, it was a, it was a what's it called, a you know, video, wasn't it? It's advert on TV. It was great. No, I don't know. I know that. But what I'm <laughs> saying is that, that the advert was just like shots of the Amiga with that. No, no, it was, it was, it was a guy, or oh, okay, it was a kid. I think it was a kid, teenager or whatever, sitting in his room, like playing Amiga with like the rain pouring down outside and like the music playing. And it was, it was, it's a oh, good advert. sunshine on a rainy day. Yeah, I one, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good okay. advert. It was a great one. I never owned right. an Amiga though, so never mind. Oh, you did, so it didn't work. It didn't work, <laughs> it didn't work no. At all. It made me, it did make me want one briefly. Um, yeah. Then I remembered it only had one button on the controller. I was like, nah. <laughs> Okay, uh, Matt. Yeah, I, I mean I, every every advert, right? I no, I wasn't ever like uh, TV adverts. I, it wasn't really a thing. But I remember seeing those adverts, like what? obviously in magazines. I'm like, well, maybe well I do want that. Because... What do you mean? Wasn't really a thing. TV adverts. I don't remember any like TV adverts for games. Uh, but I do. Really? Yeah, I just I just, I just don't. You but don't remember? I obviously Mario, saw a lot in Mario, 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 Mario. Mario. You don't remember that one? The only other I remember from my childhood is the person eating a, a Big Mac really slowly. <laughs> you know, the McDonald's what? one. What? That's the only advert I remember. You remember, the only advert you remember when you were younger is was... someone eating a Big Mac incredibly slowly. I don't remember uh, this one. Yeah. How did you end up in marketing in your life, Matt? What? what? How is well, this? Well, funny story. Uh, <laughs> no. Um... I just, but I know this is more about my mem- my memory than my love of marketing. I just can't remember someone anything. eating a Big Mac slowly. Yeah, that's a famous that's... advert. That is, is it? Yes. I was thinking the other day, right? I was thinking about McDonald's the other day. Do you remember when they did those like Transformer McDonald's things where you did, like the toy was that it was like a uh, some chips and then they turned into a robot. Um, y- vaguely, yes. People will remember that. I'm telling you, people will remember. It was like a drink and that, and then that turned into a robot as well. They were wicked. What? Have you seen Happy Meal toys now? 
They're all yeah, cardboard. They're all terrible, yeah. Because it's of good. the planet. Mm. Well, it's either oh. a book or a toy, isn't it? <laughs> So, I'll tell you what though, I yeah, just but the toy the toy's not a toy, it's a fucking bit of cardboard. That's all it is now. It's like yeah, a shit that, version that's of that's what Labo. we always say book. I just YouTubed like eating a Big Mac slowly. Nothing's come up. It's, yeah, uh, don't do that. It's just people no, eating just, Big just Macs. Google Big Mac commercial nineteen ninety two UK and it'll come up. I've just seen it, it's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, to be fair, it. I just googled slow mo Big Mac advert and it came up. So you're just shit at Google. <laughs> oh yeah, I can that. see. I actually no, I do remember this one. It's, um, it's, it's a rubbish. famous advert. Yeah. And that's it? what inspired me to get into marketing. Big Mac And also eat a lot of McDonald's. Advert. Big Mac 1992. Oh, I do remember it. Yeah. How weird yes, is that? it was a famous advert. Yeah, but I thought it was a kid eating it the way you described it. I'm sure you said kid. I think I said. I think I said person. Oh my with God, blue those, those styrofoam things that they, they used to come in. I'll tell you what, then, the way he's eating that. All the sauce is going to go whoosh all down his front. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, go whoosh all down his front. Yeah. Well, we've got a show title. No, Matt. we've already had whoosh a whoosh down all over front. your tie recently. We can't have that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> that's a regular phrase from James Farley. There's a lot of whooshing in the Farley household. Um, <laughs> Shedsy Baby has messaged us. Gent, I've recently come back to the pod after a year or so off. What the fuck, Shedsy? Yeah, that's out of order, mate. Yeah, what the hell? You can't just come in like now. What? If you're, What's if your you're problem? out, you're out, mate. What's your yeah, problem? Seriously. That's bang out of order. Seriously. That's bang what? out of order. What the? Anyway, we'll carry on. Uh, not sure why, but just want to say congrats on what the brand has grown into. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I've always loved you, Shedsy, baby. <laughs> yeah, go. no, I've got a lot of time for Shedsy, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, big fan, actually. I'm, I'm, I've missed him. Um, anyway, my question regards to old school 16 bit tunes. I find myself regularly humming tunes from the past, recently been listening to Carnival Life from Sonic 3 and Otherworldly Foe from Earthbound. Do you have any personal favourites? A lot of these feel like theme tunes to my childhood. Also, did any of you, James mainly, make up lyrics to some of, some of them? Another separate question is in the same ballpark. We'll come back to that, come to that in a minute. Uh, James. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah, or, sure. Or both of you right, I, I mean, need to find something. You guys keep chatting. It, it's, a, it's a no for me. Uh, but James, I, I bet you probably have loads. You probably sing that house, right? Um, not really. Although I did have a friend who used to do it. Where what he used to do was he used to replace. He used to use the the name of his of his cat that he had. And I remember like I went round his house once, and his mum was like, "Oh, he's upstairs." And I went, I walked up the stairs, and I could hear him singing along to a thing with you know with the lyrics of his cat, the name of his cat. Uh, for okay. I think it was, Do you remember it was, what the song was? No, it was um oh is it Sky Fortress Zone in Sonic Two? Um no oh, I've forgotten what the name of it is Wing Fortress maybe Wing Fortress Zone yeah it was um yeah he was singing it along to the name of his cat and the, what was the cat called? Uh, Mitten yeah oh okay <laughs> lovely um <laughs> yeah, yeah guys, I, I don't gonna listen, kill me I, I do not listen to old that. old game soundtracks because uh, no I just don't I never have never have. Never. Really? I, don't, I, I don't actually think I listened to many game soundtracks ever, really. Even when I thought, okay, there's that one um, particular um, uh, composer who does like film soundtracks, and he, I, I realized he did like a, he either did the Halo 2 soundtrack or part of a Halo soundtrack, and I tried listening to that, and I just couldn't get into it. It was nothing like a Hans Zimmer, which I'm, I'm a big, big fan of. Um, uh, David, do you remember what songs you may listen to as your with your childhood? Yeah, I was trying to play something from during your childhood. ISS sixty four, where I hold on, I'm trying to find it so I could play it on the show. I don't remember the what music. What you're doing? I'll go on to the second part of the question, which also might be James' thing. Also, okay. uh, no, no, okay, wait. Right. Um, another separate question is in the same ballpark. Have any of you tried some of the recent handheld emulator machines? The RG three five one M is a solid build quality, and I can't recommend it enough. It plays anything up to and including Dreamcast for backups of games you own, obviously. Keep up the good work, chaps, from Sheds. I've seen loads of these kind of from people on Twitter saying, oh, I bought this one, and they're starting to look really cool, but again, I don't have any backups and I don't really feel the need. But uh, is, this must be something you must, you must have looked into, James, no? Uh, not really, because most uh, the, these days there's just so many games like, available like constantly like new stuff coming out and there's stuff on like game pass and all that i don't i feel less of a need you know to play this sort of stuff because there's just so many other games i don't really need to yeah go back to 
stuff like that or play with my old backups. You know, it doesn't happen as much. Uh, this one actually that they mentioned the RG three five one M. Yeah, I, this is the one I think. Um, Siam's got and seen loads of people. I think this is the one that ever, yeah, because it plays like Game Boy and PS one and all sorts. Yeah, it does. It, they do look cool, but I'm just like, I, yeah, like you said. I mean, I've got enough to play as it is. I barely have time to play them. I don't think I'm suddenly gonna find time to do all the emulation stuff, which I don't really fancy getting into anyway. But these ones, but then saying look that, really as cool. I said, like Ian, Ian was on the show a few weeks ago, and he had one of these that was playing Sega Rally, the original Sega Rally, in well, handheld I mean, mode. I mean, that is tempting. I mean, and these it is tempting, cool. isn't it? it uh, yeah, I saw some people talk about this one. This, I'm sure it's this particular one, and it, yeah, it looks nice. And but I just, I've, got, I've got no time for See, that. See, the problem I have with these is that they're usually filled with games that I've played a million times before. Mm. So you know, you're talking Mega Drive, SNES, anything pre that. I'm not really interested. So Mega Drive and SNES games, I've played them over and over again over the years. If they had one that had a ton of PlayStation games in it, maybe PS2 games, um, uh, uh, Sega Saturn, um, GameCube, like would be another big one because I played a lot of the N64 ones before. Um, you know, that sort of era, I think I'd be more interested in. But they do seem to be very much SNES, NES, Game Boy Advance. You know, it's all that stuff, isn't it? Well, no, they've got, they have got PlayStation as well now. Like there's PlayStation Dreamcast and things like that. But, Really, it seems Saturn, I guess, because it's difficult to emulate, and so there's not so much. God, for that man, it. being like Sega, Sega Rally, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> I mean, you, you <laughs> don't, I mean, you've it's... still got the Music Man, haven't you, Dave? You don't need one of these. Oh my God! It, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I have still got it, but I mean, <laughs> the, it didn't even run Game Boy Advance games well, so no. I'm not, I'm not hopeful for it, James. <laughs> I'm not hopeful for it. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean. That's that's the era that I'd like to to give a go. I think, especially because you know, F Zero GX would still be good to play. The Monkey Ball games, obviously, you know, I've got that. Like playing the original ones as they were would be interesting. Um, the GameCube had some good stuff on it. It would be nice to to go back to that era. You know, like this expansion pass, man. I wish they had GameCube games as well. Like having straight just the N sixty four games. It's like they're great. I love the N64, but it's again, badly, they're games that we've played yeah. so often of, like, let's move the retro bubble up a little bit and get some uh, some more recent stuff in there. Let's get last year's stuff in there. Let's get, uh, get, get Give them a chance, there. Dave. I mean, comment. one, it will cost 120 quid a year, and two, we'll wait for Switch 2 <laughs> for that. Mm. It's true. It is very true. The trouble with emulation the... around the era of PS1 and Saturn is that that's obviously when 3D was obviously really starting, and so there's so many games where the camera is terrible because people were learning how to, you know, have 3D cameras and stuff. So that that's arguably an age where it's gonna be tougher than most to go back to because, <laughs> you know, people are still learning how 3D works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the switch to 3D is really hard to go back to. Like those early days were not very good. And that's that's the thing because like with, with this like the Switch expansion pack thing, I'm actually more interested in the Mega Drive games than I'm in the N64 ones because I know that they'll play probably a bit better and look a bit nicer actually than N64 stuff, which has aged quite badly. I still think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, going back to the yeah, going back to the music, my one of my fav- favorite favorite. Um, uh, I didn't get to say it, but I still, I mean, I said it the other day, the game, the Super Mario Land theme tune is just well underrated, like well underrated. It's yeah, it's just forgotten about now, but it's such a good tune. Um, and yeah, the one that I was trying to find was there was a football game, an old football game that my dad used to add lyrics to and in the most cringy way. And it was when you were making subs and he would just go, get down. Boogie woogie woogie woogie, get down. Boogie woogie woogie. I'm gonna have to find it. Oh, I'm gonna have okay. to find that song. Um, but I mean, I'm, it used to make me cringe, to, and it still to, makes me fine. cringe. You don't have but to, you I don't need have to, to find, find what that song again. It just popped into my head when we were talking about it. Should we get to the next question? Yeah. Well, actually, no. Shedzy continues. Apologies for the rambling message. I should have mentioned more importantly. I had a whiskey to celebrate the birth of my baby daughter this morning. 
As first isn't two oh, years old yet, but we're looking forward to playing some games in the future with them both based on your collector experiences. She's already interested in the modded one app arcade cabinet. Well, congratulations, Shedzi. So that's mm, amazing. Yeah. Man, I, I, I hope I get to a point in my life where I can have an arcade cabinet. That's the ultimate, right? Just having, like, even if they're one of those main ones that's just full of, like, games or whatever, but to sit and play, like, just have that set up somewhere, that just sounds too good. Yeah, I, I see that. more and more people on my Twitter feed who have either bought them, bought old ones which they've done up, or they've bought... I mean, it, it, it feels like there's new companies now springing up where they're selling, you know, cheaper arcade cabinets. I think one that the other day announced, like, a Ridge Racer one. It's obviously a stand-up one of a, you know, yeah, pedal this and wheel is the and stuff, thing, but... though, Matt. Like, if it's just got one game on it, I kind of don't see the point. It's like, unless you've got, like, a ton of them or whatever. But having one with just, like, a what's essentially a Raspberry Pi in the back of it that just has loads of arcade games on, that's that's what I'm looking for. Because, it, you know, I'd use that a lot, I think. And it, when we went to EGX and Harry was playing on his first arcade machines, it was like, oh my god, yeah, this is we're playing. We were playing this terrible game. I can't even remember the name of it. Um, it was awful, but we still played it for ages because it was two player on an arcade machine. Because that, that just that's wicked. So Love for you, stuff. what it's about like the the experience of what playing with like the stick and the buttons and stuff. Because arguably yeah, yeah, you could play that up, on fully focused. You can play it now, can you? Whereas I do, no. I would want one where it's just. Well, I mean, I've always dreamed of having Sega Rally Cabinet. Obviously, they're quite big. Um, but even these like kind of stand-up Ridge Racer ones, I mean, I would want something that I couldn't necessarily just play at home. I guess I could get a wheel and pedals at home. But yeah, but I, it's not I, I the same, like man. Just it's not the same. Game. It's not the same. You you try and sit there, play on a pad or whatever, and you're sitting down. And work. Going up to an arcade cabinet, it's a totally different experience. You're standing right next to the person you're playing against or with. It's just the feeling of, yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. That's what he wants. That's uh, totally what I want. We go, this is John from Matt's work. Although No, it isn't, is it? It's, is no, this it's really not. John? It's not, it's not. Uh, given oh, Matt, that's a show. Given Matt and Sarah are now best friends due to a mutual love of Crystal Palace, when have you <laughs> turned to your friends and family for advice on something you know nothing about and had to turn it into a positive experience? It's like Mario Party, uh, I don't think- Matt. Um, look, I, uh, what, no. I mean, yes. You, you just you, ignored you, it, you, James, if you remember correctly. Oh, yeah. Just ignored it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very hurtful. Well, sometimes you have to, didn't you? Uh, last time I turned to someone for advice and had a positive experience. God, I don't think I can, I don't, oh, I, it's a bit of a serious one, but talking to people that had vasectomies before I had my vasectomy was quite, um, yeah, it was quite helpful. It let me yeah. know what was coming. <laughs> the the uh, horrific well, nothing, experience you go on for a week. <laughs> oh no, it's still, it's still, it's still happening. Oh but my god! <laughs> but it's, uh, it's just you know, it's not as active. yeah. Let's let's not go into it, uh, James. <laughs> God. I don't know. I'm struggling to think of something, to be honest. Um, you must have turned to someone to talk about moving to Germany, right? Not really. Um, no. <laughs> you didn't ask him where the curtain shop was? No. Well, famously, no. It hasn't, no. <laughs> so, yeah. You, you, didn't, you didn't ask in the uh, kitchen light store? No. <laughs> but bathroom. No, I've forgotten about the kitchen oh, yeah, light. That. that was the bathroom light, wasn't it? But the, the kitchen's fine. It's very illuminated. Just, James Farley pissing all over the seat. <laughs> That's not nice. It's it's. I I take my phone in there every time so I can see. Oh yeah, for the romance. Yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. Uh, fine. Okay. Um, I basically don't ask anyone for anyone questions or advice because I think that's a shy sign of weakness, and I know it's a bad. Trait. What a load of fucking bollocks! That is bollocks. What you are you talking stuff about? All the time. Yeah. Do I? <laughs> Yes. Yes. Well, I've done. Wait, I, 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 I shouldn't have done it at all. Uh, well, what about? Oh, yeah. I well, shouldn't have done it. What the fuck are you I just, talking I about? I just it's hate asking people questions because it's like I owe them something. That's what I don't like. What? That, that's what I'm like. are on, you on talking Twitter, about? Right? I just, like a lot. A lot of people use their Twitter to ask people questions. I, I just like. I, I no, I don't. I, I, I like knowing things, and I don't. I don't want to be like, ask. I don't know. I just, I've never. 
I don't like it. You must don't have like hated putting out that, that Patreon process. survey. Well, that, that, that wasn't for me. That was for all of us. <laughs> I don't know. I just, yeah. Matt, that's a ridiculous way to think. I know. It's a sign it, I know of weakness if I know you don't know, know something. Are you kidding me? I know it is, but I just, I'm not doing it. I'm not fucking asking anyone a question, all right? Right. <laughs> this has taken a turn. Can we can we move on to the next? It really one? has. Yeah, I, d- I just I just I've I've never kind of I've never liked that, which is stupid because that that's how people learn and you like develop and and whatnot. But I just yeah. Well, I, I met, well I actually <laughs> having said that, clearly I'm asking questions. So forget I said that. If you you if you used to have said I keep asking you questions, clearly it's happening. Maybe it's maybe it's maybe it's the advice of strangers. Something about Animal Crossing Direct was brilliant. Loads of really fantastic updates. But then they ended it with, and this will be our last free update. What? That felt like a first major update. So does this mean no more updates at all? Or is it time to get those wallets out? That's a question, isn't it? Yeah, I, I felt weird putting Sign that tweet out because that's not something I normally do. <laughs> to the point where I'm like, I weakness. should probably delete this. Anyway, that, that, that's okay. just me. Where that is were shit. we? Sigourney, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go Sigourney Weaver. Uh, afternoon all. I recently been watching some videos I missed on Twitch and YouTube and wanted to ask, what happened to James's Alien Isolation playthrough? Despite the frustrations that built when watching, my audible shouts to my phone screen of, go the other way, no turn around, it's right in front of you. It was enjoyable and insane to watch. Will you be picking this up again, James? Also, is there any game any of you have started when you're streaming and such have not yet finished and would like to get back to? Cheers for all the laughs, guys. All the best from Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> uh, I've got plenty, haven't I? That I've started and not got back to... I'm just trying to think of a couple. Oh, oh God, Shenmue 3. I never finished that. Um, that was... Bullet. Nah, that was a rough experience, that was. Mm. Um, yeah, that's my answer. Uh, I mean, I, either of you could talk now, either of you. I, um, the, I'll wait for James, but I, I, yeah, so I, I, I got really close to the end, I think, of, of Gato Roboto. Um, didn't finish that. Um, I think I must have been internet in troubles at the time. And, and also a short hike. I played a little bit of that. Oh, that's uh, brilliant! That and then I had internet troubles or whatever and stopped. But so the, them two are two I could go. I do want to go back to. But Gato Botto, I, I mean, it's only like a four and a bit four or five hour game. Got right near the end and then stopped. So I will probably have to learn how well to play done. that again. The short again. hike's only about thirty minutes long, isn't it? Probably. I mean, I was probably an hour into that and then things went south. So uh... <laughs> okay. I mean, I I had a lot of problems with Alien Isolation, like technical problems with the streaming. Uh, at the time, but that maybe I could go back to it one day actually because um, yeah, my internet works now. So yeah. Did you finish Nomad Soul? Uh, no, didn't finish. I didn't finish Nomad Soul, and I didn't finish Blinks the Time Sweeper. But I'm never going back oh, to that because it's one. rubbish. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, you should go back to a, a nice station. If it's just internet troubles, James. You should absolutely go back to that. Yeah, maybe we'll. It's uh, maybe um, after you've got the internet now. After I've done Dark Souls two, maybe I'll do that. Yeah. Stream it from your bathroom. There's no light in there, Dave. Pitch black. Add atmosphere. Yeah, that's the point, isn't it's it? It's romantic, isn't space, it? Space, romantic. Space, space. Romantic. I, I, I could light some candles, sit down there. It is. It's good. <laughs> See, that's romance. Not a fucking iPhone. To- <laughs> what have we come to, eh? Where romance is a torch on your iPhone. Get the candles out, James. Get the candles out. Next okay. question. Kurt Lewin, hi all. The annual fair has just hit my town and got me thinking. If you had to own and run any ride at a fair, what would it be? It might not necessarily be your favourite ride. That might be a factor. But other things to consider are the loan you have to pay off for the ride, how much you can charge your tickets, how easy it will be to maintain, (laughs) can you play any of your favourite music on the ride... Would it be suitable for that ride? Do you want to shout stuff down the microphone at the riders? Is it exciting to watch? Or do you just want an easy life on hook a duck? All things to consider. Your yeah, mind's the yeah, easy answer to this. Easy answer. The um knock the uh the bottles off of the ledge game. You know, where you throw like a 
uh, I don't know, a baseball or something out of the bottles that's stacked up on a, a shelf. Oh yeah, because it, it you know it you know the the trick about all that about how they're um, spaced out in a specific way and bottom heavy to make it almost impossible to knock them all off the ledge. Just watching people try and do that and get really fucking frustrated that they can't is a perfect way to spend an evening. I think I'd be quite happy with that. Definitely. I think I'd like to run a ghost if... train. Why? That would be good. It's interesting. The ghosts. <laughs> Of course it is. Of course it is. Yeah. Matt, if I wanted to make bank, guy, right? I would, um, I would have one of those things where you have a little like you have a stick and a hook, and you have to hook a duck, and on the bottom of the ducks, I have like numbers on. Because we did that at Legoland, and it, it was such a, a shitty move, right? Because basically, you um, beneath each duck is like numbers, and depending on what number you get, oh, you get like these many tickets. And actually, if you go go again, you get these many points to get like basically the big prize or whatever. And uh, I think we had one go, or it was three, maybe one or three goes, whatever. We had our allotted goes for the five pounds we paid. And then women's like, well, you got this, but do you want to pay another tenner and you can get a chance of one of the big ones? Um, and obviously, you know, when when she's like, yeah, do, do, do you want to go one? This, do you want to have? Do you want to try and win this one? Do you? It's ten pounds. Like we can really say, now nah, fuck off. But what? So fifteen really, pound did, total. Did, Jill, Jill did want to say fuck off. I was like, no, she's just doing fifteen pound job. total. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, when wow. Eddie looks like, oh, I do kind of want that. I was like, oh, what an absolute joke. What app like? Anyway, that really annoyed me. So if I want to be rich, I'll I'll do that. The the hook a dock thing, as uh, as Kurt mentioned. My favorite, my favorite uh, uh, success on one of those games was at Cheserton, and they're the ones. Have you seen the ones where the the buckets are like angled, and you have to throw the ball in the bucket, and um, uh, you have to throw the ball in the bucket, and it has to stay in there, and you have to do it with all three of the balls that they give you. No, but that does sound good. Right, okay. So it just so happened the week before I'd watched a YouTube video on how best to do it. Like, you don't aim to chuck the ball in the bucket because it hits the back and then bounces out, right? What you need to do is throw it underarm, spin it, and aim for the side, and it sort of rolls around in there and it stays in there, right? So I rocked up and they had these massive Marios and I had my last pound coin of the day because, you know, I'd spent all the money when we were there. And Harry was like, please, can you try and win me one of those Marios? And I was like, we've got one attempt, mate. It's not going to happen. Oh, please, go and try and get me one of those big Marios. So I paid the pound and I stood to, there was like no one else playing it. So I stood to one side and I threw it from there, did the underarm technique, got them all three in at the same time. And the person that was running it was like, I've never seen anyone just do that first time like that. And then she got <laughs> no, the massive no Mario down and gave it to Harry. And I was like strutting away like a big man. No, I've never felt so good. That that was uh, that was pure win, that one. I loved wow. that. Yeah, that was a good wow, one. Wow, wow, wow. Um, but for me, it would definitely be the throw the, te- the tennis ball at the bottles one because I bet you get people going up to that and going, yeah, I could do that. It's easy. And they get really frustrated that they can't. Because it's a, a rip-off, right? Okay. <laughs> well, we're going right. to end with Robert uh, Robert's message. Hi, guys. I purchased a premium pass for Forza Horizon 5 on the day it became available to buy in the store. I have no idea what the extra content is, but I'm confident they will be good given their track record of releasing good expansion packs. It'll be amazing. My question, my question to you is, are there any games and publishers who you would buy a season pass for prior to knowing what the content is? And have you ever done so, but got burned by the poor content you got when it came out? <laughs> You've done this loads of times, haven't you, Matt? Yeah, well... Didn't I, you famously, every time you buy the deluxe edition, you only play it for about a week? Well, no, no, it's just if I buy it digitally. I mean, it's, that's changed these days because obviously so much is digital. But yeah, like I thought, okay, I absolutely loved Battlefield 3. I will buy Battlefield 4 digital, bought that disaster, didn't barely played it. Uh, I did it with I basically I think three or four games in a row where I'm like I absolutely love the first one I'm pre-ordering the digital one and I, it, it's just a kiss of death for me so I've stopped doing that although I haven't said that now more games are digital so um, but in, in terms of the, the, pre, the premium pass um, I can't actually think of many that I have bought that I've like played because again Destiny uh, definitely I, I bought one of Des- Destiny's like that with the premium stuff 
Yeah, I, I think I, Destiny I mean, Two. I, I got like, one of the digital versions, which came with like the premium pass or the season pass for a year, whatever it was. And but yeah, I mean, I mean, Forza Horizon Five is a good shout because you know it will be good. Um, so he's done. He's, he's done well there. But I'd love to know what they're doing this if they're going to go down the toy route again. You know, the it Lego stuff well was last so time. good. I wouldn't be surprised if they have quite different feeling kind of DLCs. Did you play did you play the Lego uh DLC? No, I didn't. I did one of you, but I never got around to it. God, it was so I mean, good. Again, I didn't play any of the DLC for, for four. Yeah, I didn't I didn't play what the first one that came out. But there's the, like the Stormy uh, Island one, there's the Rally one. Yeah, the, the, it one. was all about that that the Lego DLC. That was just so good. Um yeah, that was the well worth picking up if you haven't played it. I thought that's kind of, that's out sure. this year. It's kind of um I was trying to work out what's actually come out this year because everything keeps getting delayed. In fact, like today, Elden Ring got delayed till 2022. Yeah, no, um, Fools, is, Fools is definitely coming out. That looks... Um, yeah, that Fools looks is one of the few really things good. that is nailed on, I reckon, at this point. So yep, Q, if rumours are to so, be believed, it's been ready for a while. So or Q, at least in a, a very good state for a while. About half an hour after we stopped recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. I've I've done this with um, you know the Telltale games. I did. I used to do that every time with those. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah of course. And I didn't do that with the Life is Strange games for some reason. Mm-hmm. Well, you just... like the first one, I bought them as they come out. Mm-hmm. I think because uh, no, they were only well, like four did, quid. But it's that's a little bit different, and that's not like a well, yeah, but they're all the whole point of them is they're episodic. So that's not like hey, I'm I'm buying the main game, and I also buy the premium pass to get. Extra yeah, content that comes so. down the line. Yeah, it's slightly different. Huh. Okay. So you're wrong there, James. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> you're wrong. But that's it okay. for questions. Cool. Let's get to the socials, Matt. Yes. This Friday, James is back on Dark Souls 2. You're still loving it, aren't you, James? Dark it is. Souls it's 2. brilliant. It's really good. I'm really enjoying it. How many bosses have you killed so far? Um, I don't know. Quite a few. It's. I mean, I've got to one at the moment that is... I think it's going to be quite a challenge, but it's it is very enjoyable. That's the one in the dark, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I saw you take that. Off. 